Yo, what's up guys, so today we are gonna see, what if, Kushina takes revenge on Kanoha, Naruto x Harem movie. Hope you'll enjoy this video. So before we start, go check out the author of this fanfic, Blue Lion Fox. Link is in the description, and also subscribe to my channel, and like this video. Kushina peeked around the building she was hiding behind and saw the gate. Her blue eyes quickly scanned the area only to spot five ANBUs, damn it she cursed under her breath. She rubbed her hurting stomach, don't worry we will eat soon she whispered to her stomach as her unborn kicked again. The group of ANBU all jumped off to continue their patrol of the village and Kushina used this quick change in the guards to escape the village. In Kanoha's hospital. Karinai and Anko walked into what was supposed to be Kushina's hospital room to find it empty, where Sensei Karinai asked. I don't know, maybe Minato knows, Anko replied. Maybe Karinai said taking one last look around the room. The two turned to leave when Anko bumped into the table next to the door, out she said. You okay, Anko Karinai asked? Yeah, just hit the corner of the table, Anko replied. What's that on the table, Karinai asked pointing to a small scroll. Don't know what Anko answered by picking up the scroll. She opened the scroll. I saw what you did. If you want to have a relationship with Atsui then don't let me stop you. You no longer have to sneak around to be with her because I'm done with you, forever. And don't even think you're trying to get my son, because I will blow this entire fucking village up if you attempt to put one hand on him. Have a shitty and rotten life you asshole, Kushina Oizumaki. What happened? Obviously Minato was cheating on her. Karina I said. So where is she now? Anko asked. You're the tracking specialist you find her, Karina I said. Summoning no, Anko called out and summoned her personal. Can you track down Sensei? She asked. Fine, but you have to give me some dango and fully grown Nizumis, the purple replied. Deal, Anko said. The two followed her out of the hospital and towards the gate. Are you sure she came this way? It leads out of the village, Anko asked. Yes, I'm sure. I am never wrong when I'm tracking someone who is annoyed by a stupid question. But Kushina Sensei wouldn't leave the village without telling us what the 10 year old purple haired Kunoichi said. We don't know that yet, maybe she has a reason for not telling us she was leaving the 12 year old red eyed Kunoichi said. She would still tell us, Enko protested. Will you two be quiet, or we will be busted, they said as they crossed the gate. Too late, an ANBU appeared in front of them. Anko and Karinai took a step back getting into their fighting stance. Kure would now Anko asked her older sister. I don't know if we can take on an ANBU Karinai whispered back. The ANBU took a step towards the two then fell face first on the ground. Why are you two not at home sleeping Kushina asked. Anko wanted to visit you in the hospital Karinai said. Kure said you would leave the village without telling us. You wouldn't do that. Anko asked, looking at Kushina as if she would cry. Kushina smiled. Of course I wouldn't leave without you too, she said pulling them into a hug. But why are you outside the village, she added. We read the letter you wrote and got scared so we came to look for you, Anko said. Don't worry, I'll be fine. Now go back home and sleep, Kushina said. No, I want to go with you, Anko said. Kushina looked at Karinai for help knowing that the 10-year-old wouldn't resist unless they both told her to. But the look she was receiving told her that Karinai was on Anko's side this time. The 17-year-old sighed, fine you both can come with me, but we will have to move as fast as possible, she said. Don't forget about my Dango and Nazumiya Senko's personal summon. I won't, Anko replied before vanishing in a puff of smoke. Two days later in Kanoha, Minato walked into Kushina's hospital room with his personal ANBU guard, where Kushina asked the doctor. I don't know, she wasn't here when I came into work today, the doctor replied. Who was in charge yesterday? Minato asked. I'm not sure. I was off yesterday, the doctor replied. Minato nodded. Fine, you can leave, he said, and started to look around the room. He found the letter Kushina wrote and read it. Damn it, he said. Is there something wrong? The female ANBU asked. She found out about us somehow, Minato said. I see, the ANBU said. She took my son and left the village, Minato said. Oh, what will you do? The ANBU asked. I don't know what Minato said. The ANBU thought for a minute, I can give you more than one son. All you have to do is say the word and we can take our relationship to the next level, the ANBU said. Minato looked at her. Yes, Hatsi, I would like to take our relationship to the next level, he said. Three weeks later. 
After almost a month of traveling the three Kunoichis arrived in a small town outside of fire country. We need to find the hospital Kushina said holding her stomach in pain. Three hours later Anko and Karinai were sitting next to Kushina as she held her newborn son. He is in perfect health, the doctor said as he finished giving Kushina the report on baby Naruto. Can I hold my brother Anko? Kushina smiled. Of course you can Anko she said handing her the baby. Be careful, Kurinai said as Anko grabbed the baby. Kushina laughed. Don't worry Kurei she said. Is it safe for us to hold him? Kurinai asked, looking at the baby in Anko's hands. Of course it is. I want to hold him, Kushina said. Kurinai quickly shook her head. I'll drop him she said. Don't worry I'm right here. You will be fine, Kushina said. You think so Karina asked quietly, she really did want to hold him, but was afraid she would drop him. Of course I do, Anko gives Kure Naruto Kushina said. Okay, here you go, Kure Anko said. He is so small Karina said taking the baby. Sensei will change his hair color Anko asked looking at Kushina. Yes I will, but I have to wait a few months before I can do it, Kushina said. A year later. Kushina was walking around Whirlpool with Naruto in her arms. She was wearing an orange jacket that stopped below her upai. It has a blue strip that stretches from her wrist to the end of her jacket. She also is wearing black sport shorts that stopped at the top of her thigh. On her shorts is where she had her eight. Under her shorts on her right leg she had medic tape and her kanai pouch over the tape. Her outfit was finished off by boots that went all the way up to the bottom of her thigh. Her long red hair was flowing freely behind her. Being back in her old home made her forget about everything that happened while in Kanoha. In the year that Kushina had been back in the country she was appointed leader of the place. During her first year she proved to be an excellent leader by removing Whirlpool from the smallest country ninja-wise to one of the largest out of all the countries that wasn't one of the great five villages. She also expertly made a treaty between Whirlpool and Kiri and Suna and was currently working on a way to make a treaty with Kumo. Whirlpool quickly became a power in the trading world also, becoming the largest trade export of all the countries. Anko became a force in Whirlpool's armed forces as she rose through the ranks extremely fast. She was the youngest in Whirlpool's history at age 11, beating Kushina's old record by a few months. She was also the poisons expert of the country, and created most of their poisons. Since she was younger than most genins she wasn't allowed to get a genin team, but she wasn't complaining because she could use that time playing with Naruto. Plus her childish personality and habits made it hard to take her seriously which was the exact opposite of Kurinai who had a serious personality. Her outfit consisted of a skirt that stopped mid-thigh and a fishnet shirt covering her entire upper body. She also had a jacket that stopped at her waist with sleeves large enough to use her hebes freely. Her eight was now on her waist over her skirt. Her entire outfit was brown. Kurinai wasn't no slouch as a kunoichi, although she wasn't the force that her younger sister was, she still was one of the top ninjas in the country, and she made up for everything she lacked in ninjutsu and taijutsu. It was the year she joined Whirlpool's ninja force and got her first team only months later. She then proved to be a much better teacher than almost everyone, as her team passed the exams on their first try. In the year and a half she had been in Whirlpool she led three teams that all passed the exams in their first try and was working on her fourth. Her outfit consisted of a long white dress with a red undershirt. Her eight was also on her waist. Kushina held Naruto while she watched toddlers run around happily playing with their parents. She looked down at Naruto while he made laughing noises. You like watching kids run around with their parents don't you Ruto-chan she asked while tickling him and receiving more laughing from the little redhead boy. Lady Kushina called out to her. Kushina turned, yes Yugi she asked the boy who was just a few years older than she was. There is someone at the gate demanding to see you, he said. Oh, who is it? Kushina asked. It's a kunoichi, she says it's important, and won't take no for an answer, Yugi replied. I see, I'll be there soon, Kushina said. Kushina started to walk towards the gate when Enko and Karinai came up to her. Sensei, where are you going, Enko asked. Someone wants to see me at the gate, Kushina told them. Karinai asked, curious. Don't know but they won't take no for an answer Kushina told her two students. I can make them go away Anko said with a smile. You don't need to threaten everyone who doesn't do what you want them to, Karinai told her younger sister. You're just too nice Anko said while making a face at Karinai. Will you ever grow up? Anko Karinai asked. I am growing Anko said. 
Are not, you're barely taller than Ruto Karin, I said. Come down here and say that, I dare you, Anko said. Enough of you two, we are at the gate, Kushina said as they were only a few yards from the gate. The Kunoichi was wearing a full body robe with a hood and a mask. The only thing Kushina could make out was the Kanoha Hitaite and got pissed. What do you want? She asked in a hard voice. Kushi, it's me, Kunoichi said, taking off her mask. Kushina redirects her eyes from the eight to look the person in the eyes. Eri, what are you doing here? She was surprised to see the Hyuga. It's my daughter Hinata, she is in danger, Eri said. Kushina asked. What do you mean? Well, on the day she was born, Kyuubi attacked the village, and the Hokage and council decided to use Hinata as a jailer of the demon, Eri told her old friend. Kushina looked shocked. They sealed Kyuubi in your daughter, she asked. Yes, but since there have been constant attacks on her life, even some Hyugas have tried to kill her, Eri said as she started to cry. And what has Hayashi done to stop these attempted murders, Kushina asked. Eri just shook her head as she cried holding her sleeping one-year-old daughter. Nothing, he let people try and kill his daughter, Kushina asked. He even tried to kill her yesterday, that's why I left, Eri said. But why come here? I'm sure you can go somewhere else that can protect your daughter better, Kushina asked. I don't know anyone else outside the village. I would feel comfortable leaving her with Eri. Kushina sighed, there isn't much we can do to help you. If Kanoha attacks looking for you we won't be able to fight them. Even with our rapid growth over the last year we still have only 1000 ninjas. Kanoha outmatches us 5 to 1 she said. I know, but I don't have anywhere else to go, so I can't go back to Kanoha Eri. Lady Kushina, sorry to interrupt but you might want to know that Kumo has signed your treaty, but put in a stipulation what will be decided by a future Kage Kushina's assistant said coming up to her. What kind of stipulation Kushina asked? Didn't say, it could be anything, but the Rakage did say it would be something reasonable, the assistant said. With this that gives us protection from Kiri, Suna, and Kumo we can let them live here since Kanoha won't attack with the risk of one of those three countries attacking in our defense, Karinai said. Kushina sighed, you have to throw out that Hittite before you can come into my compound, she said to Eri. Thank you so much, I am forever in your debt, Eri said as she threw her free arm around Kushina's neck and hugged her. Kushina wrapped her free arm around her waist, don't worry about paying me back, you have been my best friend since the day I stepped in Kanoha, she said. Lady Kushina, there's a problem on the west side of the village, an ANBU said. Why didn't you solve it? Kushina asked, looking at the ANBU. Well I didn't know how to solve it, the ANBU replied. Oh, you completed the ANBU training right? Kushin asked. Yes, the ANBU replied nervously. They covered how to handle any situation right? Kushina asked. Yes, the ANBU replied. So why can't you solve it? Kushina asked. I didn't want them to think I was taking the side of one or the other, the ANBU said nervously. How long have you been in the ANBU? she asked. One month, he replied. Give me your mask, you're not suited for my ANBU, you're demoted she said, holding her hand out. Please give me another chance, the ANBU begged. You want to join the village right Eri Kushina asked without looking at her. That was the idea, why Eri asked confused. Well get his mask Kushina said. What do you mean, why can't you do it? Eri asked. I can, but I need to know something Kushina said looking at Eri. Fine Eri said then vanished. She then held out her hand with a mask in it to Kushina. What exactly did that prove, she asked. That you're willing to side with me, even if it doesn't make any sense as to why you're on my side, Kushina said, taking the mask. Naruto made a noise while reaching out to the mask. Do you want this mask? Ruto asked, holding the mask and pulling it just out of his reach every time he almost grabbed it. Kushi, if it's not any problem, I didn't bring anything so I need to go shopping, Eri said. Sure, Anko can you show her around Kushina asked. Of course I will sensei, let's go no eyes Anko said. Eri sighed, why do you insist on calling me that, you know full well I have eyes she asked. It's funny, Anko said laughing. Grow up Anko Karinai said. Shut up Karinai, you're not an adult yourself Anko yelled at her. Are you two sure you're not secretly related? Kushina asked. The two shrugged, I'm pretty sure we are not related Karinai said. Let's go, if we get there early enough we can beat the midday rush Anko said leading Eri and the one-year-old Hinata away. Lady Kushina, please give me a chance to get my position back now. I'll think about it, 
For now guard the gate, Kushina said and walked away. Enko and Eri walked through the Kunoichi clothing store, can I help you? The clerk asked. No, we are fine, Enko said. Well enjoy your shopping, the clerk said. I hate shopping, sensei sent me on purpose, Enko said once the clerk was gone. Don't worry, I'll be fast, Eri said. Eri went through all the clothes that were in the store and finally settled on a pair of long blue sport shorts, a tank top shirt that stopped a few inches above her belly button, and a jacket that went to her waist. What do you think, she asked. A lot of blue, but it's great, Anko said. This coming from the one who is wearing nothing but brown, Eri retorted. Okay, okay, can we just leave? Those shop happy girls are coming, Anko said. In Kanoha. Hayashi walked to the Hokage's tower. Minato, he said, walking in. What, Hayashi? I'm busy, Minato replied, gesturing to the piles of paperwork. Have you seen what Eri Hayashi asked? Nope. Last I saw her was when she came complaining about the latest attacks on Hinata's life, Minato said as if he didn't care. Now that I think about it, I haven't seen Hinata today either, Hayashi said. Minato looked at him. You don't think she took her outside the village, do you? He asked. That will be a problem off our hands. The QB container will be dead soon, Hayashi said. Maybe not, Minato said. What do you mean, Hayashi asked? Kushina is the leader of Whirlpool, the fastest growing country and Eri's best friend plus it's only a day's travel from here, Minato said. You think she went there, Hayashi asked? Well, Eri did give me hell the past year about what happened to her, so if I had to guess I'm betting she is in Whirlpool, Minato said. What will we do about this? We can't allow Whirlpool to gain control over the container, Hayashi asked. I'll think of something Minato said. Good Hayashi said then headed out the door, Atsui he said nodding to her as she entered and he left. Atsui asked, holding their one-year-old daughter. Nothing, just Eri ran away and took Hinata with her, Minato said, hugging his now wife. Oh where could she have gone with that demon child Atsui asked? I think she went to Whirlpool, Minato said. Isn't that where she lives? Atsui asked. Yes, Minato said. So what will you do? Atsui asked. I think I will have a meeting to let them know of the consequences if they continue to protect those two, Minato said. Atsui smiled, I'll go. I want to see her face when she finds out we are married and have a daughter, she said. Of course you will be there, Minato said, kissing her on the forehead. In Whirlpool. Enko, Karinai. And Eri were sitting in Kushina's office as she read the scroll to them from Kanoha. So basically we have to go to this meeting or risk a potential war with them, Eri asked. Yes, Kushina said, leaning back in her chair. And this is a problem. How can we take them? Anko asked. It's not that. I can't risk a war over nothing. And I don't want to be in a room with Minato or Atsui Kushina spitting their names out with hate. We will come, Karina I said. You don't have to. I will have my personal guards come, Kushina said. No you won't, we are a team, a family and family stick together. We are your personal guards, Anko started with a serious tone. You won't leave us behind again. We are coming or you won't be going, Karina said. Kushina just looked at the two not sure what to say. Did Anko just say something in a serious tone was all she could think to say. I guess we better get a babysitter for the two kids, Eri said. Kushina smiled. If you three are coming then you will need these. She said, pulling out a mask, a cheetah mask, and a kitsune mask, Enko got them, Kure got the cheetahs, and Eri got the kitsune mask she said while putting on her own mask. In Waterfall Country Kushina, Eri, Enko, and Karina arrived in Waterfall Country and went to where they were supposed to be meeting Minato. They arrived before anyone else and stayed hidden to see who all would be coming. After waiting for an hour the rakage arrived followed by the mizukage. The two sat at the designated table and waited. Not long after, the Hokage arrived with his protection. After waiting a little while longer Kushina walked into the room. The daimi looked around, since all participating parties are here can all the kages remove their hats he asked. Everyone removed their hat while Kushina sat there with her mask on. Everyone looked at her. I'm not a kage and I didn't wear a hat, she said. Please remove your mask, daimi asked. As you requested, Kushina said and removed her mask. Minato and his guards glared at her, and she glared back showing that they couldn't force her to back down. The Reikage and Mizukage now understood why Kushina requested them to be here to show that they would back her if they needed to. Damu, even though he wasn't a shinobi, 
could sense that the two groups didn't like each other. Ukami Wolf Kitsune Fox Hibi Snake Cheetah Cheetah Karinai and Eri were looking from their hiding spot when Karinai noticed Anko was missing. Where did Anko go? Eri looked around with her Kugan. She is headed towards Kanoha, she said. Why would she go there? Karinai wondered. Should we go get her, Eri asked. No, she is an expert at sneaking into places she does not belong to. We will leave her alone right now. If she isn't back within the hour, then we will go find her, Karinai said. Okay, if you think that's best, Eri said. I do. We wouldn't do anything but get in her way, Karinai said. Damia cleared his throat. Okay, let's begin, shall we ask? Of course, hand over the two Hugas you're trying to protect, Minato said. Make me Kushina said in a childlike fashion. I know you're angry, but there is no use in starting a war you can't win to protect someone who should be dead already, Minato said. If she should be dead then why is she still alive? Kushina asked. Stop playing these games and hand them over, Minato said standing up from his chair. Why don't you and your bitch take them from me, Kushina said as she stood up. Her name is Atsui and you will not mention her name again, Minato said darkly. Bitch 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 Atsui Atsui Aksui Kushina sang, what will you do if I don't stop mentioning her she taunted. Say her name again I dare you Minato threatened. Atsui, she is a big useless Kunoichi, all she does is hide behind you for protection like she is now standing there waiting for you to make me stop talking about her Kushina said. You bitch the female ANBU being Minato yelled as she jumped at Kushina with her ANBU katana. Kushina pulled out a kunai and blocked the katana. What's wrong is your old age slowing you down? She taunted the older Kunoichi. The Daimyu, Reikage, and Nazukage just watched in shock. Atsui kicked at Kushina but it was blocked. You're just mad because I took Minato from you she yelled. No, you can have him. He wasn't that good in bed anyway Kushina said. You weren't saying that when you were in bed with him Atsui yelled. Really? I don't remember it being anything worth mentioning. Plus he is only about 7 inches Kushina said. She then let go of Atsui's leg and kicked her back across the room. Minato caught his wife. You will regret putting your hands on her, he said. Yeah, yeah, you're all talk, Kushina said. Enough the rakage yelled getting their attention. Now we are here for a reason and it's not to watch you three fight, he said. They started it, Kushina said, pointing the finger at Minato and Atsui. Well, let's get it done here, Damia said. Either hand over Eri and Hinata or you will be facing war with us, Minato said. I won't be handing over anyone, Kushina said. Fine, then you have signed your country's death warrant, Minato said. If you attack Whirlpool I will send my own ninja to protect them, the Rakage said. So will I, the Mizukage said. So little man are you willing war with two of the, the great villages for two people? Kushina asked innocently. Minato glared, fine, keep them. But now this isn't over, he said. Let's go, my husband. We have been away from our daughter for too long, Atsui said, wrapping her arm around Minato and leaning on him. Yes, we have, Minato said. Kushina glared at the two. How pathetic. You can't beat me so you're trying to use you being married to make me jealous, she said then turned and walked out. Tell your fatherless son I said hi, Atsui said. Before anyone could see her move, Kushina had Atsui pinned against the wall with a kunai planted in her stomach and another pressed very hard against her neck. Ever mention my son again and I will kill you before you can finish your statement, she threatened. Atsui's eyes were wide with fear. Minato struggled out of her throat. Minato kicked at Kushina's head, making her release his wife so she wouldn't be hit. He then stood in front of Atsui protectively. Attacked my family again and I'll kill you, he said. Let's see you try. Kushina said, getting ready to attack again. Karina Eri, an Anko who just came back appeared next to Kushina. If you want to fight her you have to go through us, Eri said. Not in my country you won't. Everyone get out the Daimi yelled. Four years later. A five-year-old Hinata and Naruto were running through the village with paint covering their bodies. Their latest victim of their pranks, the very large statue of Kushina in the middle of the town. How they were able to paint something so large without anyone seeing was beyond most people in the village, except for a group of four kunoichis. Three of them were currently laughing their asses off from the painting. The two who painted the statue were laughing while they ran from the chunins that chased them. They turned and ran face first to the only member of the four kunoichis who knew how they were able to paint it in broad daylight. Now what should your punishment be for this she asked. 
Mommy, it wasn't us honest, Hinata tried in an innocent tone. So I guess the paint that's covering you isn't your fault either, she asked. Of course it's not, Auntie Eri. Those knocked it on us, Naruto lied. Tell it to someone else who believes you, Eri said, grabbing the two by the back of their shirts and pulling them to the compound. So those chunins couldn't catch them, Kushina asked as Eri brought them in. No, Eri said. Nice one, you two, Karina laughed. Yeah, I owe you lunch for doing it without being caught while painting the statue, Anko said. I can't believe you two are encouraging them. Kushina tells those two they can't keep this up or the kids will think it's okay to always act like this, Eri said. Kushina laughed awkwardly, yell what she said while scratching the back of her head and smiling widely. You made a bet also, didn't you, Eri asked? That they couldn't do it and come back to the compound before you found them, Kushina said. Eri shook her head. Am I the only adult in this family, she asked. Is that a rhetorical question the 21-year-old village leader asked? Yes, it was rhetorical, Kushina Eri said. Good, Kushina said, smiling. Now who is going to clean that paint up, Eri asked. Don't worry, I gave them a water-based paint. It will wash off when it rains, Anko said. Kushina clapped her hands. Okay, you two get cleaned up. You're coming with me to the office, she said. Yay, can I wear your hat, Mommy Naruto asked. Sure you can, Kushina said. The four Kunoichis watched as Naruto and Hinata flipped and bounced off the walls to their rooms. In Kanoha. Atsu walked down the street with her five-year-old daughter and her one-year-old adopted son in her arms. Her five-year-old ran around every pole they passed. Suki didn't go too far ahead, Atsui said. Okay, Mommy Suki said as she flipped to walk on her hands. Someone came running around the corner and knocked Suki off her hands. Sorry, the boy said. Oh, idiot that hurt Suki yelled at him. Suki was nice and he said sorry, Atsui said. He should watch where he is going. I was here first, Suki said. I'm sorry, I'm running from my brother, the boy said. Well, I forgive you this one time, Suki said. I'm Sasuke. What's your name, he asked. Well, you're still in my way, Suki said. It's Sasuke, he corrected. Whatever, Suki said. Suki Atsui said. Okay, I'm Suki, she said. Sasuke didn't tell you not to run off like that, his brother asked. You're just mad because you can't catch me. Itachi Sasuke said. Whatever, we have to get home, Itachi said and grabbed Sasuke's shirt and started to walk away. In Whirlpool. Walking through the gates of Whirlpool was two Kunoichis. One was blonde and made everyone look at her as she walked through the village. The other was curious as to why everyone was looking at them. Why are everyone looking at you like Tsunade? Because I'm Sunin, it happens everywhere I go, Tsunade said. Did your Hokage send you to check up on my son? Someone asked from behind them. The two turned and looked at the Kunoichi, Kushina Tsunade asked. Mommy, who is the lady Naruto asked from Kushina's neck. Tsunade of the sentence Kushina said while glaring at Tsunade. Tsunade did something to anger her, the black-haired Kunoichi asked. I don't think so, Shizen Tsunade said. Answer my question, why are you here? Kushina asked. I'm here to visit the country, it's what I do, Tsunade said. Well, Kanoha ninjas are not allowed in my country, Kushina said. Did I miss something Tsunade asked confused? Kushi, let's go into your office and talk about this, Eri said with a nada on her neck. Anko Naruto yelled and jumped off Kushina's neck onto his unsuspecting sister. Naruto didn't do that again, Anko yelled as she caught him before he hit the ground. Naruto just laughed. Karinai, can you watch Hinata, Eri? Of course, come on you ball of energy, Karinai said. Hinata happily jumped from her mother's neck to Karinai's waiting arms. Let's play tag, then play catch the kitsune, then play tag again, then we can play ninja, then we can play tag again, then we can play dress up, then eat and play tag again Hinata said happily. Karinai laughed, what are we going to do with these two Anko she asked. I don't know, maybe we should leave them here and run away, Anko said. No Hinata and Naruto yelled. Let's do it Karinai said as she sat Hinata down and ran away. Anko did the same thing. Cute kid Tsunade said as she watched Naruti and Hinata chase Anko and Kurinai. Let's get this over Kushina said as she led them to her office. Once everyone was in the office she turned to Tsunade. So did he send you or not she asked. No one sent me anywhere. What are you talking about? Tsunade asked. Minato has been going out with Atsui the entire time he was with Kushi, Eri said. 
Really I wasn't aware of what Tsunade said. They even tried to rub it in my face a few years ago, but I got them back good Kushina said with a satisfied smile. What did you do? Shizen asked. I stabbed her with a kunai and now she can't have any more kids. I was going to cut off his testicles but the waterfall Damu kicked us out of his country before I could, Kushina said. I thought you and Minato were having a kid, why would he ruin that? Tsunade asked. I had a kid, I'm both Naruto's mother and father, Kushina said. Okay so why are you here in Whirlpool? Eri Tsunade asked. Hinata has the QB sealed in her, the village tried to kill her almost every day the first year she was born, the day before I came here Hayashi tried to kill her, Eri said. Oh was all Tsunade said. Seven years later. A 12-year-old Naruto walked into Kushina's office and sat on his special chair right next to her. Kushina looked over at her son curiously as he put on her newly made Kage hat. He was wearing black pants with his kunai pouch on his right leg. He had on an orange jacket that stopped at his waist with a blue strip under his arm that extended from his wrist all the was to his hip. He had on standard shinobi shoes, on his hands and arms was medic tape, but it was unseen except on his hands. She smiled every time he put that thing on. Can't wait until you become the Nidame Musicage, can you? She asked. Nope, I'm going to be the best Nidame in history of all Nidames, Naruto said. Well, first you have to prove you deserve the position, Kushina said. Who better to get than me? I am your legacy, Naruto said. Maybe, but I'm not just going to give you the position. For all you know, someone else might be better for the position, like Hinata Kushina said. That's not fair, she gets extra help from Kyubi, Naruto said. QB is part of her, Kushina said. Fine, I just have to get stronger, Naruto said. I know you will, where is Hinata anyway? You two are always together, Kushina asked. She went with Auntie somewhere, Naruto said. Oh, Kushina said then there was a knock on the door, come in, she said. Tsunade walked in the room. How has things been since I was gone, she asked. Fine, Naruto is a genin, and one of the strongest genin. Only Hinata is stronger, and that's if she uses Kyubi's chakra, Kushina said. Tsunade asked. Well, skill-wise, they are even. Although Naruto takes my punch-you-in-the-face approach, Hinata prefers Ares outsmart you approach. The only real advantage Hinata has is a larger chakra system and more energy. But Naruto isn't a slouch in those areas either, Kushina said. Are they going to take the exams? Tsunade asked. Of course, Naruto can't wait to show Minato that he is a better shinobi than he will ever be, Kushina said with a smug smile. I bet he can't, but I found someone you will be interested in, Tsunade said. Kushina asked. Jiraiya Tsunade said. Really, did you tell him what happened? Kushina asked. Yeah, he won't take any side on this since technically he is both kid's godfather. He is going to train both to the best of his abilities, Tsunade said. Kushina smiled. I got first dibs on training, she said. He is at the bathhouse right now. Hope Anko and Karina are not in it, or no one will get any training from him, Tsunade said. Don't worry, they have strict orders not to kill after what happened last time, Kushina said. Oh, he is staying here for three months then going to Kanoha for three months to train his goddaughter. He said after the exams he will take them both as apprentices to train them at the same time for a few years, Tsunade said. I don't know about that. Minato might try and have his daughter do something to my son, Kushina said. Why not let Nada come with me, Naruto suggested. I'll think about it, Kushina said. Enko walked into the room. Ruto there you are I was looking for you, she said. Really why Naruto asked confused. Training, Kiki is already at the training grounds, Enko told him. I thought you cancelled training today, Naruto said. Enko looked at him with an amused look. I don't remember that. But I do remember you trying to get out of training, she said. Kushina looked at Naruto. You're not trying to skip out on your training, are you? Of course not, she really said training was cancelled, Naruto protested. Do you want to spend the day in the ocean again, Kushina asked. No, I'll be at the training ground, Naruto said and ran out the room. What am I going to do with that boy? He is too much like me, Kushina said. Well, it's better than the alternative, Anko said. Kushina smiled, it isn't it? Speaking of the alternative, I have a list of the genins in these exams, and it seems like holding Ruto and Nada out until this year was the right thing to do, she said. So that daughter of his he mentioned is in these exams, Anko asked. Not only that, the Yamanaka, Nara, Amakichi, Inazuka, Aburame, Hyuga, 
and Uchiha airs are in these exams, Kushina said. Anko had a wicked smirk on her face. So how long until we get to see my brother and sister kick their asses, she asked. One month exactly, Kushina said, matching her smirk. Tsunade saw their smirks and had a bad feeling about the upcoming exams. A month later. Kushina walked up to Kanoha's gate followed closely by Anko and her first genin team which consisted of Naruto, Hinata, and Kiki. Walking next to Anko was Karinai and her newest genin team which consisted of Ryu, Po, and Ki all were males. All the genins had masks on. Eri also followed with her bringing up the rear making sure no one would sneak up on them. The guards weren't surprised to see the Yuzukage walk up with the genins, Yuzukage sama they said, letting her through the gate. Kushina just glanced at them as she led her ninja through the gate. Everyone turned wanting to see what not only the only female Kaiga in history, but the youngest Kaiga looked like. Kushina tilted her hat so it covered her face as she smirked as they tried to get a good look at her. Kurinai, Anko, and Eri made a circle around the genins with Kushina at the front of the circle. As they walked further into the village the Hokage and a few others stepped in front of them halting their advance. How rude to stop a Kaiga who came to see her genin in their first exams Kushina said with a hint of amusement. Why bring him to these exams? You held him out of the last four exams. Why let him come to my village to take these exams? Minato asked. Kushina shrugged, to embarrass you in front of your village she said with humor. Kushisama Naruto asked behind his mask. Of course Kushina said. Naruto and Hinata stepped up and looked at everyone in front of them. They nodded to each other and removed their masks, shocking everyone. Minato and Hayashi looked at the two as if they weren't worth the time. What do you two want? Atsu asked. The two Jin and Smirk then jumped planting their fist right in their respective father's noses. Everyone but the Whirlpool Ninja looked surprised at the two. Those two held a grudge like no other ankle laughed. How dare you put a hand on our leader, yelled a random person in the crowd. From behind Hayashi and Minato the Hyuga heir and Namike's heir stepped up prepared to defend their leader and father respectively, you will regret that the Hyuga said. Hinata tilted her head to the side, are you a girl or boy she asked. Naruto started to laugh. Enough of you two, we have things to do, Kushina said in a voice that demanded respect. Yes Kushisama the two replied putting their mask back on and falling back into the protective circle. Kushina groaned at hearing them call her that, she hated when she was called Sama, especially by her son and daughter figure. Suki watched as they walked past their appointed hotel, that boy, I must get to know him she thought to herself then walked off. Suki, where are you going? Kakashi asked. Suki shrugged, I'm hungry she said and continued to walk. Mom, are you sure we won't get kicked out of the exams for what Naruto asked? Yes I'm sure sweetie. Why don't you all go eat or something Kushina said. Okay, I'm starving, Hinata said as her stomach growled in agreement, shut up Q, we will eat soon Hinata said to her stomach and inner demon. Come on you two Anko said. Oh no you don't, I'm taking you, we don't need you influencing them to prank the entire village Eri said. Anko smirked, I wouldn't do that she said. Yeah whatever, come on Karina I said pulling Anko and leading her team out the hotel. Eri led Anko's team around looking for somewhere to eat. I remember this place. Kushi single-handedly kept them in business with how much she ate here, she said. Naruto read the name, Ichiraku Ramen. Let's try it, he said. Sounds good, Hinata said. They walked into the restaurant and took a seat at the counter. Hey, you're the ones from the gate, they heard. They turned and came face to face with a girl that had blonde hair and blue eyes. She was wearing standard shinobi pants and a shirt that fit her form perfectly. I'm Suki, she said with a smile. Hinata, Kiki, Naruto, and Eri looked at the genin. Well I want to welcome you to Kanoha, Suki said. Well we thank you for the welcome, Eri said as the three genins just looked at her. It's rude to stare, she added as she started to eat her ramen. The three started to eat their ramen. Well I'm the daughter of the Hokage, Suki said. Good for you, Naruto said not looking at her. Is there a reason you hate him so much? Suki asked as nicely as she could even though she was getting pissed at how they were ignoring her. Does it matter? Naruto said. He is my father, of course it matters to me, Suki said. Look, unless you have something important to say, stop talking to us or I will make Hinata snap at the 12-year-old. Suki was shocked but didn't let it show, you better show me respect or I will make you, she said glaring at Hinata. I would like to see you try, Hinata said. 
Suki smirked. I will be glad to show you how skilled I am. Being the daughter of the Hokage has a lot of advantages, she said. Like not even being his firstborn child Hinata said then immediately put her hands over her mouth. Hinata Eri said making said girl sit down and look as if she was about to get in trouble. What does that mean? Suki asked. Everything about your precious father isn't true. Let's go to you three Eri said and led them out of the restaurant. They walked into the hotel they were staying in and Kushina looked at Eri in confusion. What's wrong she asked. Someone talks too much Eri said. Kushina looked immediately at Naruto and Hinata, what did you two do? It wasn't me, Mom Naruto said immediately, putting his hands up in defense. Nada Kushina asked. I may have got angry and told Suki that she wasn't her father's firstborn Hinata said looking at the ground. You did what Kushina yelled so loud it was heard across the village. Sorry Auntie Kushi Hinata said. Kushina took a deep breath, okay you two don't talk to anyone from Kanoha she told the two troublemakers. So I'm not in trouble, Hinata asked. No, but don't let this happen again, Kushina said. I won't, Hinata said happily. Hinata Eri said. Yes, mom, Hinata answered. You're staying in your room for the next two days, she said. But mom, it was an accident, Hinata protested. I don't care, you know that you were forbidden to mention what Eri said. Don't worry, Nada, I'll stay with you, Kiki said to her friend and teammate. Me to Naruto said. You two are the best friends ever, Hinata said. At the Namike's compound. Suki walked into her home and saw her mother in the kitchen. Mom, can I ask you something, she asked. Of course, Atsui said. Does daddy have another kid that I don't know about? Suki asked, looking at her mother expecting an answer. Atsui stopped what she was doing and turned to her daughter, which makes you think that she asked nervously. Well, for one, that boy from Whirlpool looks like him even though his hair is red. For two, I feel like I'm somehow connected to him. Three, the Yuzukage seems to have a lot of hate for both you and father. For that girl from Whirlpool said that I wasn't his firstborn. And finally you got nervous when I asked you about it. Suki told her mother holding up a finger for every point. Atsui sighed. It's not my place to tell you that. You will have to ask Minato himself. She finally said. Suki said and turned to leave. Be back in time for dinner and stay away from those Whirlpool scum Atsui called after her. Okay mom Suki said as she continued to walk out the kitchen. Suki walked into the Hokage's tower. I need to see my father, she said to the assistant. Go on in, all he is doing is setting up the village's security, she told the young girl. Thank you Suki said with a smile and walked into the office. Hi dad she said as she entered. Suki, what do I owe the pleasure of being visited by my favorite daughter Minato asked as he smiled at her. I'm your only daughter Suki said. All the more reason to be my favorite Minato said. He then motioned for her to come closer. Once she was seated on his lap with her head resting on his shoulder he spoke again. What's wrong he asked. Dad I ran into those ninjas from Whirlpool and one of them mentioned that I wasn't your firstborn. Is that true she asked, getting straight to the point. Minato sighed I knew one day this would come up he said. What daddy told me Suki said. You see sweetie, a long time ago I was engaged to marry Kushina Ozumaki. The Kage of Whirlpool, he said. What happened? Well it was an arranged marriage, I went with it for a while. But I didn't really like her that much, she was too much of a tomboy. Then I met your mother, and well things happened and I married her instead Minato said. That doesn't answer my question though Suki pointed out. Well no you're not my only child, I had a son with Kushina. I'm not sure of his name Minato said. Suki is the red haired boy isn't he? Yes and his left hand hurts just as much as Kushina's did, Minato said. So I have another brother, Suki said. Unfortunately, yes, Minato said. Why did you keep this from me? Suki asked. Because I didn't want my past to come back to haunt me. I was hoping I would never see them again, Minato said. Oh, I'm going for a walk, she said. Okay, and remember you will always be first in my heart, Minato said. I know, Suki said. Two days later. Hinata walked into the main room of the hotel suite they were staying in. She found her mom sitting with Kushina and was leaning on each other as if they were hugging. Mom can I go outside now? It's so boring in here she whined. Not until tomorrow Eri said. Please I'll be good. I promise Hinata pouted. No Eri said. Hinata pouted and walked back to the room that Naruto and Kiki were in. Let's take them outside. 
Those three have been cooped up in that room for the last day and a half, Kushina said. No, she needs to learn. She can't say whatever she wants, Eri said. I know that, but this is their first time in a large shinobi village that wasn't Kumo. Besides, we will be with them, Kushina said. Fine, but only this one time. Next time they will serve their punishment out in full, Eri said. Okay, Ruto, Nada, and Kiki get cleaned up. We are going outside, Kushina called out. As soon as that left her mouth, the two heard a lot of movement, then three different showers turn on. Wow, they must be ready to get some fresh air, Eri said. They were walking around the village when they saw Suki talking to another Kunoichi who had on a Kanoha headband. I can't believe you have another brother who heard. I know, all this time I was told that I was the oldest child. What should I do? Panda Suki asked. I don't know, you said it was the cute redhead from Whirlpool, right? The girl named Panda asked. Yes, Suki answered. Maybe we should look for him. I would like to meet him, Panda said. Why aren't you dating Niji Suki? Not anymore, Panda answered. Tenten, -ten, why did you run like that? They heard. Niji, leave me alone. I'm done with you, the girl who now is being called Tenten -ten responded. Let me make it up, Niji begged. No, I caught you kissingly, you know how gross that is, he is a boy, Tenten -ten said in a disgusted voice. I didn't kiss him, Sasuke tripped him when they were sparring and Lee happened to fall on me when I was laying down, Niji explained. You didn't try to push him off either, Tenten -ten pointed out. My hands were trapped behind my head, Niji said. Whatever, the best we will ever be as friends, Tenten -ten said, leaving no room for discussion. Niji growled in frustration and walked away. He really kissed Lee, Suki said. I know, then he tried to kiss me, Tenten -ten said. Sorry for your luck, Panda. All the guys in this village find ways to kiss other people, Suki said. Yeah, maybe I can get a date with your new brother, Tenten -ten said. Unknown to anyone but Kushina and Eri, Hinata let out a low growl at the thought of her putting the moves on Naruto. Kushina looked over at Eri to confirm if she heard that growl or if her mind was playing tricks on her. When Eri gave her the same look she knew she had heard right. Good luck, Suki laughed. What you don't think I can get a date with? Tenten -ten asked. No, all I'm saying is that his teammate is very short-tempered, Suki said. Anyway, we should look for them, Tenten -ten said. I'm still not sure that's the right thing to do, Suki said. You're just scared of being turned away by your brother, Tenten -ten said. Shut up, Panda, and unless you forgot I have a younger brother, Suki said. I didn't forget, but even you said they treat him like he is the only kid they have Tenten -ten pointed out. Not all the time, Suki said. Really, didn't you just run away three days ago because they blamed you for everything even after they witnessed him doing most of the stuff they blamed you for? Shut up, Suki hissed out and started to walk away. You can't keep running from your problems. When you decide to look for him, let me know and I'll join you, Tenten -ten said and walked home. Suki waited up, she heard. Great what now Suki said turning around and saw her teammate running up to her, what's Sasuke she asked. Kakashi sensei wants us for a meeting, Sasuke said. Suki was about to leave their team meeting when Kakashi stopped her, Suki held on he said. Yes, Kakashi she asked. Don't believe what those ninja from Whirlpool say he told her. Suki looked shocked, what are you talking about? She asked. Don't think I don't know about your meeting them a few days ago. Remember where your loyalties are, he told her. Is this another less than trash speech you always give me, Suki asked? No, but apparently I need to give you another one, Kakashi said. Why, all I'm doing is trying to get to know my older brother, Suki. Everything doesn't need to be known, Kakashi said. Suki asked. Because the truth isn't always the best thing to find out, it's a lesson you need to learn fast if you're to make it as Kunoichi, Kakashi said. Why is everyone so afraid of me knowing who my brother is? It's my birthright to know who he is, Suki yelled in frustration. And what will you do when you know who he is? What will you do when you find something about him that you don't like? What if they try to kill you? Kakashi asked calmly. At least I will know the truth about my brother before I die. What else have you all kept from me? Do I have a long lost sister somewhere? Is my father even my real father? What about my mother? Do she have any stray kids somewhere? Suki yelled then turned and ran away leaving a shocked Kakashi behind. Kakashi shook his head and vanished in a puff of smoke. How did your talk with her go? The Hokage asked. Not good. She is doubting everything we do. She thinks we are lying about something else. Particularly you and Atsui Kakashi told him. 
I see, bring me tent and please, the Hokage asked. Sure, Kakashi said. A few minutes later Kakashi returned with an annoyed looking Tenten. Sorry for interrupting your training, but I have an S-ranked mission for you, the Hokage said. What an S-ranked, but I'm only a Genin Tenten said in surprise. I know, you're the perfect person for the mission, the Hokage said. What's the mission? Tenten asked. Keep Suki away from the ninjas from Whirlpool until the exams are over and you will be paid in full as soon as they leave the village, the Hokage said. That's all I have to do, Tenten asked. Yup, that's all the Hokage said. Okay, I accept the mission Tenten said. Good, you start immediately, the Hokage said. Tenten nodded and left the office thinking about her mission. She walked out the tower and ran into Suki. Tenten, what are you doing in the Hokage's tower? Tenten looked at her best friend thinking what to do. I have an S-ranked mission, she said, deciding to tell her the truth. Really, what is it? Can I help Suki asked in excitement. Well, you promised not to overreact, Tenten asked. Why would I overreact? Suki asked. Well, the mission is to keep you away from the Whirlpool Ninjas, Tenten said. What, how could you accept that mission? You know I want to get to know my brother, Suki asked with hurt in her voice. Look, Suki, I'm sorry, but I couldn't pass up the chance at my first S-ranked mission, Tenten said. I know. But your mission is to prevent the one thing I really want, Suki said. I know, but my mission has nothing to do with messing away from them. As long as you are not seen around them then the mission will be successful after they leave, Tenten said with a smile as she tried to hint what she was thinking. Suki quickly caught on and smiled. You're right, I have all my life to talk to him. I'll make sure your mission is successful. She said and the two turned and walked off. Tenten found the Yuzukage and walked up to her. Excuse me, she said. Kushina turned and looked at the two genins, yes, she asked. Well, I have a problem and I need your help, Tenten said, thinking of a way to explain her mission. Kushina looked at the girl. I'm all up for helping a young Kunoichi, but why come to me when there are plenty of Kunoichis that are part of this village you can get help from? Well, it involves you and one of your ninjas, Tenten said slowly. You're curious about my son Kushina. She figured she was correct when the other girl's eyes looked up at her quickly. Well, I can see from your reaction that I'm right so ask away, she added. Well, my best friend Suki, as you know, is the daughter of the Hokage. Well, I have an S-ranked mission to keep her away from your ninjas until the end of the exams, but she really wants to get to know her brother, Tenten said. A real problem, tell you what, because you're being honest about your mission, I'll make sure none of my ninjas come around you too, but in return I want you both to take a mission that sends you to wave after the exams and that way you can get to know every about Naruto that you want Kushina said. You have a deal, Suki said immediately. Good, now I have to go, good luck in the exams, Kushina said as she walked away. Well that was easy, Tenten said. Suki turned to her. You're crazy, we could have been caught, she said. Tenten shrugged, but we weren't and being a kunoichi means sometimes we have to break rules so they work for us, plus you get to meet your brother in a few weeks, she said. I guess you're not going to try and hit on him, are you?" Suki asked. I'm making no promises, Tenten said. You're evil, Suki said. Hey, I'm just keeping my options open, besides he is kind of cute, Tenten said. Suki rolled her eyes, let go before my parents got any ideas, she said. Sure, I need someone to help me sharpen my weapons anyway, Tenten said. Oh no, I'm not helping you this time, remember what happened last time, Suki said. Tenten smiled. That wasn't my fault, she said. Yeah, those spears just magically appeared behind me. I couldn't walk for a week, Suki said. Please, it will pass the time. Plus, it will pass the time until the beginning of the exams faster, Tenten said. Okay, no games. All we do is sharpen your infinite number of weapons, Suki said. Good, let's go, Tenten said. Two days later. Enko and Karina led their genins up to the academy. Well, we taught you everything we could to get you to this point. Time to put your excellent teamwork to good use and pass these exams, Karina said to her genins. All right, my first genins to take the exams, she heard Anko. Ah, um, Anko sensei, we are the first genin you ever had, Kiki pointed out. Kiki, stop ruining my moment, you will have yours after you pass these exams. They are way easier than the graduation test you had to go through back at home, Anko said. What exactly are we going to do for these exams? Naruto asked. Well, the first test is Anko was caught off by Kurinai's hand meeting the back of her head. 
Ouch, what was that for? Growing up Anko, you can't tell them what the exams are, it would give them an unfair advantage, Karina said. Right, and using a 10,000-year-old demon in training to increase their speed, agility, and instincts isn't cheating Anko asked. Karina was about to come back but stopped short, just come on she finally said pulling her sister behind her. The six genins watched their sensei slash sisters walk away. Okay, I guess we should get going, Naruto said stepping up to the plate, still trying to prove he could be a leader. Everyone looked at him, right let's go, lead on Rito Hinata said. Follow me, Naruto said. They walked into the academy and noticed it was quiet and empty. They walked further into it. This is the day of the exams right Ryu asked? Yeah, it's circled on my calendar Kiki answered showing them the calendar. I don't like this, Naruto said. What is going on? I hate surprises Po asked. Genjutsu all six said at the same time. They all brought their hands in front of their face, Kai they said. The world around them shimmered and broke showing that the hall was indeed packed like it should be. They finally broke it, and someone yelled. Took them long enough someone else yelled. Naruto did something Hinata whispered. Naruto flashed through some hand signs faster than most of the Konoha genins could see. A false illusion said and the six of them vanished from sight. All the genins looked at them in surprise. I'm glad my sister taught us what Naruto said. Useless jutsus won't work against us they heard then it was broken. Hinata Naruto whispered. Hinata stepped behind Naruto and bent her head down so that her hair was covering the side of her face and made a one hand sign, two both on the ceiling hidden behind a, one directly in front of us the other directly behind us she whispered back to him. Naruto smirked, a prank statue he asked. Prank one Hinata responded with humor and mischief in her voice. The two went through the needed hand signs to fast for anyone to keep up, specialty. Prank Phi they said at the same time. Everyone looked around but found nothing different. You two can stop hiding, we already know you're there. Achiha and Hyuga Hinata said with the hidden voice of hate that only Naruto picked up. He looked at her, and she just shrugged. Her way of telling him he already knew why she hated them. So you're a censor, you're better than I thought. But you didn't work, the Hyuga said. Don't underestimate us or you will be humiliated, Naruto said. You two couldn't get to work. How do you plan to humiliate us, the Uchiha asked. Everyone looked at the two and started to laugh. What's so funny, the Hyuga asked. Everyone is as crazy as I always said they were, the Uchiha said. Maybe you two should look at yourselves. Tenten laughed out. The two looked at each other and their eyes went wide then looked down at themselves. They both were dressed in pink women's dresses complete with the pink shoes and makeup. You two are dead they yelled at the laughing pranksters. They threw themselves off the ceiling and hit the two directly in the face. Not so funny now is it the Hyuga asked. Actually it's even funnier since you just hit a shadow clone Naruto laugh from the spot that the Uchiha was. Yeah for elite clan members you two sure are lacking common sense. Who attacked someone head on while dressed in bright pink Hinata laughed from the Hyuga spot. I'm going to kill you. Uchiha yelled. No Sasuke, that won't work on those two, the Hyuga said. Oh you learn fast, a direct approach will never work against them. I should know I tried, Kiki said from the sideline. Shut up, Hyuga said. Come over here and say that Kiki challenged me. Kiki, he isn't worth your time. Besides he would have a harder time hitting you than he is with us, Hinata said. Whatever Niji, what do you suggest Sasuke asked? Well we need them to come to us, Niji said. How Sasuke asked? Make them mad, Niji said. Good luck, you're looking at the two happiest people you will ever meet. I have known them since we were five and I never once saw them angry, Kiki said. I know exactly how to make them mad, Niji said with a smirk. Sasuke thought for a minute, well you see, I'm not sure if I should say anything, but there is a rumor going around that the Yuzukich was used by the Hokage as a sag's toy for his pleasure and when he was done with her he threw her out the village like a rag doll he finally said. I heard that rumor, but I have one also. There is this rumor in the Hyuga clan that the former wife of Lord Hayashi was kicked out because she was caught having sags with every male that was registered within the clan, Niji said. The four whirlpool ninjas looked at each other and slowly backed away from the soon-to-be-dead genins. Tenten saw this and pulled Suki. I think we should back away from those idiotic teammates we have, she said. Why do I want to see this? Suki said. Look around, do you notice who isn't here anymore? Tenten asked. Suki looked around, you're right. Where did those whirlpool ninjas go? 
she asked. Exactly, something bad is about to happen, Tenten said. Hinata and Naruto dramatically changed, the two was deathly quiet, both had their eyes closed, and both had strange-looking three-pronged kunai appear in their hands out of nowhere, and to top it off their chakra signature shot up higher than what any genin's chakra signature should be. Suki looked at them and immediately knew what they were used for. The smirks on Sasuke's and Niji's face vanished when the two vanished and they couldn't sense or see them, even with their activeness they couldn't find the two. Everyone looked around nervously, saying what they wanted about us. But the moment you say anything about our mothers, especially things that are not true, is when you cross live they hear the two voices at the same time. But oddly enough it sounded like they were everywhere in the hallway. Niji I can't find them, Sasuke said looking around with his Sharingan. I can't either, Niji said, looking around with his Byakugan. Freeze they heard. Everyone looked at where the voice came from and was surprised to see the Yuzukage and her ANBU, both who looked annoyed at something. The ANBU pulled her arm in front of her face, Kaishi said and they was finally able to see the two genin standing in front of the now nervous Sasuke and Niji with their strange looking kanai just one wrong move from going through their necks. Save it for the exams the ANBU said. Naruto Hinata, you already know the truth, don't let them get you this worked up again the Yuzukage said then the two vanished. Kiki, Ryu, Po, and Ki ran up to the two, let's go before anything else happened, Kiki said and pulled Hinata and Naruto by hands away from everyone towards the exam room. What just happened? How can you put on yourself like that Sasuke asked confused. I don't know what Niji said. Looks like they met their match. We don't have to keep them in line anymore Tenten whispered as they walked up to them. Good, I hope someone kicks their asses soon or I will have to do it myself, Suki said. The 20 teams that passed the first test were waiting for the protector of the second exam when Sasuke stood up, looking like the losers from Whirlpool aren't so worthless after all he said. Do you have to be so troublesome? A lazy genin asked. Oh shut up Shikamaru, you're just mad because you're not as cool as Sasuke-kun, the pink-haired genin said. Holy crap is that your real hair color? How did you make it this far with bright pink hair Naruto yelled. Shut up, you're wearing a blindingly bright orange, she yelled back. I have been a shinobi since I was 8 years old, and I have never failed a mission, Naruto said. Hinata and Kiki both smacked him in the head, shut up Naruto Kiki said. So what, all that means is that you're a useless shinobi, the pink haired girl replied. Actually the Yuzukage held us out of the exams until now. Because we have so many ninjas that all our genins get the chance to fully develop their skills, Kiki said. Who are you, his spokesperson, the pink haired girl asked. No, I'm the oldest and leader of this team, Kiki said. You're only older by a few months, Naruto said. Still older, Kiki shrugged. I don't care who is older, you're all useless, Sasuke said. Kiki vanished from sight. Not even Hinata and Naruto could see her. I don't know what your problem is and I don't care. But if you continue to underestimate me I will make you pay she said from behind him while holding a kunai to his neck. How can you be so fast the pink haired kunoichi asked. That doesn't concern you Kiki said. Just then he walked in. Alright looks like this year has a lot of promise. Follow me he said then turned and walked out with everyone following him. He led them to a giant stadium. Okay for this part of the exam you will have to use teamwork to pass. Each team will fight a. In order to win you must either get the to admit defeat or last until the 10 minutes runs out. If even one of your teammates is defeated then your team fail he said. Up in the stadium Anko looked at Kurinai then at Kushina. I thought that this part was supposed to be held in the forest of death she asked. Kurinai said. I wasn't aware of a change in the exam Kushina said out loud. It was a last minute change to better test the wonderful genins Minato said. Kushina was about to retort but stopped herself. Fine, continued she said. Up first will be Team Enko from Whirlpool v Kakashi from Kanoha the said. Oh I do hope your genin can handle a little one on three against the for at least ten minutes, Minato said. I do hope your pervert isn't too busy reading his porn to keep from getting embarrassed. Kushina shot back. Begin the journey. Kakashi stood there with his book out reading as the three genins watched him with no intent on moving. After a while Kakashi looked at them, what are you waiting for he asked. I see no reason to jump into fighting, Naruto said. Besides the rules never stated we have to actually fight you, just survive 10 minutes against you. And we have been standing here for 9 minutes already, Hinata said. Kakashi tilted his head to the side then shrugged, 
He shot towards them with a kunai in his hand, time they heard. Minato's face palmed at his lazy student. Looks like you pass, he said. Next team Karinai from Whirlpool Vibaki from Suna then called out. Ryu, Po, and Ki calmly walked into the arena and waited to begin. Baki joined them. I hope you don't think I'm going to be as easy as the last, he said. We wouldn't expect you to, Po said. Begin, they were told. The three genins blew up in a puff of smoke surprising Baki for a second. The first to be seen through the smoke was Ryu. He was no longer dressed in a normal shinobi outfit. Now he was wearing black pants with no shirt. He had on a black trench coat that had a strap across his chest and a large sword on his back that was as long as he was tall. Po was the next to be seen and he was wearing clothes similar to Ryu's except he didn't have the strap across his chest for a sword and his clothes were all white. He also had a spear leaning against him. He stood there with his hands in his pockets. The last to be seen was a sleeping key. His outfit was the same as Poe's except in blue. Next to him was a katana that was in its sheath. Poe sighed as he kicked his younger brother. Wake up idiot. Now is not the time to be sleeping he said. Poe if you kick me one more time I'm going to kill you Lai said. Like you could Poe said. Enough of you two. Our opponent is waiting. The oldest triplet said. He vanished from where he was and brought his katana down on Baki. They expected the sudden attack and easily blocked it. He didn't expect the genin to be so random with his attacks. He went back on the attack, not giving them a chance to make a move. Baki blocked, ducked, parried, and dodged all the attacks with little trouble. As Ki slashed his katana at him, Baki ducked under the attack and kicked Ki in the stomach. He then proceeded to punch him in the face sending him flying back. He jumped after him, but was cut off by another weapon attacking him. Po appeared in front of his brother with his spear at Baki's neck. Ryu appeared behind him to catch his littlest brother. It's been two minutes, my turn to fight, Po said. Ryu jumped back with Ki, you okay, he asked. Yeah, unlike Sensei, he doesn't pull his punches, Ki said. Po attacked with his spear keeping them away from him. Baki ducked and dodged the spear waiting for an opening. Baki found his opening off a small mistake that Po made by overextending himself on an attack. Anyone but a wouldn't have seen it. Too bad for Po he was A and went on the attack, he appeared behind Po and sent him flying to the other side of the arena. He then attacked, landing rapid punches to the genin. He gripped his katana and looked at his oldest brother who shook his head telling him it was still too early. It was obvious that he wouldn't be able to stay still much longer, Ryu just hoped Po could last another 30 seconds. Baki ducked under a swing of Po's spear and kicked him into the air. Kai now Ryu yelled and the two brothers took off towards the he appeared in front of Po with his katana headed for Baki, who blocked the sudden attack with a kunai. A big mistake he said and his body was covered by lighting as it went through his katana, shocking Baki. Ryu came down where Baki was with his sword in his right hand. It went straight through Baki and cracked the arena. Baki blew up in a puff of smoke and a log was in his place. You three are good I'll give you what Baki said from the other side of the arena, forcing you to use his something. Your sensei must be proud he added. Ryu attacked with his sword in his right hand, his attacks were powerful, very powerful compared to his brothers and they were fast considering the size of the sword. Baki just dodged and waited for his time to attack. Once he saw an opening he was attacked from behind. He rolled to the side and blocked the katana from Ki that came from behind him, he decided to attack at the same time he asked. We have two minutes, our best chance now is a group attack post said. You have shown me enough that I want to see how you fare against my genins, I forfeit Baki said. Oh come on, we were just getting started, Ki said. Tell me are you three related, Baki asked. We are triplets, I'm the oldest, and Ki is the youngest, Ryu said. I see, your attacks are that of someone who was trained by the same person, Baki said then walked away. Po grabbed his side, that kick still hurts, I think it broke one of my ribs, he said in pain. Two for two, Minato said. Of course, I knew my genin would pass. What about yours? Kushina said. Karina appeared next to her genin. Po, are you okay? She asked. I think I have a broken rib, Po said. Come on, I'll take you up to Tsunade, Karina said as she put her hand on Po's and Ryu's shoulder, and Ki grabbed her arm. She then vanished with them in a swirl of flower petals. Up next will be Team Kakashi of Kanoha v. Anko of Whirlpool. Don't kill them, Karina said. I wouldn't do that, I'm just going to force them to show how skilled they really are," Anko said. The four jumped into the arena, they said. 
Enko didn't waste any time as she threw three kanais at the Genins and immediately created three kagebushins and went on the attack. Enko kicked Sasuke into the air who flipped, riding himself then went through some hand signs, katan, dragon fire no he called out. Water dragon whip Enko called out destroying the fire dragon and colliding with Sasuke. Enko and Suki were in a heated taijutsu match. Suki swung at Enko who ducked and kicked the genin in the stomach. Suki rebounded and sent a kunai and caught the kunai and sent it back to her. Enko sent Suki flying back again before the genin tossed a barrage of kunais at her, making her halt her attack. Suki knew they had only a few minutes left then vanished in a streak of blonde and stabbed a surprised Enko with a kunai. Once Enko was destroyed the other Enkos looked over in surprise giving both Sasuke and Sakura a chance to destroy the clones. The real Enko clapped from her spot in the shade, doing a nice job, and being able to use the Horation is really impressive, she said. The three got into their stance. No need for that. I just wanted to see your abilities and I have done that. I want to see you against my genin, she said and jumped up into the stands. Of the 20 teams that started the test only 6 teams passed, from Kanoha team Kakashi and team Guy, from Kiri team Mei, team Baki from Suna, and from Whirlpool team Enko and team Karinai. They stood in front of them. Okay everyone congratulations on passing. Now everyone pulls a number they said. 1-1 one, one ninja from Kiri said. 14 the second said. 10 the final Kiri ninja said. 16 Sasuke said. 3 Suki said. 12 Sakura said. 11 Tenten said. 2 Lee said. 18 Niji said. 4 Naruto said. 17 Hinata said. 15 Kiki said. 5 Ryu called. 9 Ki said. 7 Po said. 13 Gara said. 6 Tamari said. 8 Kankura said. Good now this is how the matches will be the said after he finished writing down the names. 1v2, 3v4, 5v6, 7v8, 9v10, 11v12, 13v14, 15v16, 17v18 you have a month to get ready for your match train well he said. Well let's get training. I have one month to make you stronger Anko said once they reached her. Actually Anko, I'm going to train Naruto. There are some things I want to teach him, Kushina said. And I have some things to teach Hinata Eri. Both of them Anko complained. Don't worry, they are still your genins, it's just some family things I got to teach Naruto, stuff you can't, Kushina explained. I guess you have some things related to the Byakugan to teach Hinata Anko asked Eri. Yes yeah, sorry Eri said. Anko sighed, come on Kiki, at least I can give you my full attention she said. Don't worry Anko, remember last exams, I got all three of my genins taken away by their parents for training Kareen I said. Kushina grabbed Naruto and vanished via Shunshin. They appeared in a secluded opening outside the village. Oklahoma Ritochan the first thing I want you to do is sign my contract. It's a family contract for her. Cool Naruto said with joy. Kushina did the required hand signs then bit her thumb. She slammed her hand on the ground and a giant seal appeared under her hand. There was a puff of smoke and the size of Naruto appeared. There was light blue in color and held a large scroll on its back. They grabbed the scroll with its snout and sat it in front of the two Ozumakis and it unrolled. Signed it with your blood then pressed your fingers to it so they knew who summoned them Kushina instructed. A month later. Most of the genins who were in the third round were in the stadium waiting for the matches to begin. Hinata and Kiki stood next to each other with smiles on their faces waiting to begin. I walked into the stadium. Hello and thank you for attending the exams. I'm Ginma and I will be watching over the final part of the exams. Now everyone but numbers 1 and 2 can leave the stadium and go to the waiting area, he said. He watched as everyone left the stadium. Now the first match Haku of Kiri v. Lee of Kanoha began he said as he jumped out the way. Kiki and Hinata walked into the waiting area and stood near the back leaning against the wall quietly talking to themselves. They felt someone coming up to them and looked at the person. Can we help you? Kiki asked. Where is your teammate? Kunoichi asked. The two shrugged. No clue Hinata said. You're not nervous that he won't make it for his fight? The Kunoichi asked. No, he will be here, Kiki said. How can you be sure? The two smiled. He has a habit of being late. Plus he wouldn't miss this for the world, Hinata said. In the stadium Lee was looking at his opponent. I hope our match shows the youthfulness we both have, he yelled. What Haku asked was confusing. 
Our passion for battle will not be challenged. Let's give the people what they came to see Lee said then charged with him. Haku just stared at him. A weird kid he said to himself then pulled his katana out of its sheath from his back. Let's see what Kanoha Nins can do he said and charged at Lee. Lee took out a kunai and blocked the strikes from Haku. Everyone watched in amazement as the two fought to get the edge over their opponent. Lee kicked Haku away from him. You're a most excellent opponent he said. The same could be said about you, Haku said. Thank you, but I'm going to have to get serious, Lee said as he pulled something off his wrists and dropped them, making a dent in the ground. Haku looked at them wide-eyed. You fight with those things he asked? Well I can't use chakra so I use them to give me an advantage Lee said as he took his weights off his legs. I see what Haku said. Ready Lee said then banished, kicking Haku into the air. Haku landed hard on the ground. He coughed up blood as he slowly got to his knees. He saw Lee start running at him again. I don't think so he said as he forced his katana into the ground then went through some hand signs, Hayatan, ice missiles he called out. All around him ice formed from the air and shot at Lee. Taken by surprise Lee couldn't dodge them, Hayatan, ice dragon of the north mountain Haku called out, and the dragon hit Lee dead knocking him unconscious. Gemma came down to the stadium, winner Haku of Kiri, can numbers 2 and 3 come down he asked. Sat down and waited. After a few minutes Genma sighed and was about to start talking. Wait don't disqualify him yet Suki said surprising him. Sorry Suki but rules are rules Gemma said. Either wait a few more minutes or I'll quit the exams Suki said. Genma sighed, fine I'll give him two more minutes he said. There were a bunch of boos at the extra time. 90 seconds later the wind picked up and leaves started to fall, slowly two figures appeared in the middle of it all spinning until they came to a complete stop, sorry, we overslept, the redhead Kunoichi said with a huge smile, while having one hand behind her head. Everyone looked at them for a minute, took him long enough Kiki said. Yeah Hinata said. Well if you will excuse us, the second match between Suki of Kanoha and Naruto of Whirlpool will begin now, Gemma said. Good luck son Kushina said as she put her kage hat on and jumped up to the kage's box to join the other five kages. You're still late as always Minato said as soon as she entered the box. Will you be quiet? We are trying to watch the fight Kushina said without looking at him. Suki watched as Kushina jumped up to the kage's box then looked back at Naruto. He is ignoring me she thought. She then vanished and appeared next to him with a ball of chakra in her hand. Raisingan she said and pushed it into his stomach getting a surprised look from him. He then blew up in a puff of smoke and kneed her in the stomach. I won't be caught off guard that easily he said from her other side. Suki then went puff and a branch was in her place neither will I she said from behind him. Suki kicked him in the back of the head only for him to puff away revealing a clone again. Naruto punched her in the side of the face only for her to turn into a log again. Naruto glared at her in frustration as she did the same to him. This is getting us nowhere, he yelled. I agree, we could keep this up all day and no one would get an advantage, Suki said. You must be a Kawarimi master to use it in such a small amount of time like you have been, Naruto said. The same about you and your clones, Suki said. It's been a while since I had this much fun fighting an opponent, Naruto admitted. Well, let's not end our fun here, Suki said. Well, let's say he was cut off by getting hit in the back by a... He looked surprised before he turned in the log. You almost got me at that time. I didn't know you knew the shadow clone Naruto said from the other side of the stadium. I don't know what gave you the impression that I didn't know it. Just because I prefer Kawarimi doesn't mean I don't know shadow clones. It was your doubting my knowledge that gave me an advantage, Suki said. You're right, and I won't underestimate you again, Naruto said. Good, because next time you won't have enough time to escape, Suki said, pulling out two kunai. And threw them at Naruto. Naruto pulled his own kunais out and threw them at her. The two then flashed through some hand signs, Fyutan, Eternal Wind Dragon Naruto called, Raitan, Dragon of the Sky Suki yelled. The two dragons flew at each other full speed meeting in a collision of power. The result was an explosion so loud and bright that everyone watching had to cover their ears and close their eyes so they weren't blinded by it. When it was safe to look everyone saw the two genins flying through the air and each hit the wall on either side of the stadium at the same time. They then fell face first onto the ground not moving. Genma jumped and looked at both, since either shows signs of getting up this match ends and he was cut off. No, I can still fight, he heard. He looked at who said that, and was surprised to see Suki slowly getting to her knees. 
I'm not done, don't stop the match, she said. Maybe, but your opponent isn't moving, Gemma said. He will just go back up to your seat and watch, Suki said. Oh, and how can you be so sure, Gunma asked. He is my brother, I can feel it, he will get up, Suki said, finally getting to her feet. Slowly Naruto started to move, he told you he would get up, Suki said. Naruto finally made it to his feet, I'm not done yet, I still have plenty of tricks up my sleeve, he said. Suki smiled, let's finish this brother, she said. Naruto looked at her shocked then smiled back, yeah let's finish this, sister, he said. Up in the Kage's box Kushina had a small smile on her face that her son was able to look past her hate for this village and Minato to accept that he had a sister. Minato had a frown, he wanted nothing to do with her family. In the stadium Matsu was having similar thoughts. The two genins charged at each other prepared to continue their fight. As soon as the two siblings reached each other they exchanged taijutsu at a high speed. They jumped back and prepared for their next attack. Naruto went into his pack and hid a small container as he attacked. Suki charged up a raisin gan and got ready to smash it in Naruto's stomach. Naruto's hand flashed in front of her face as he dove to the side to avoid the. Suki stopped as she sneezed and wobbled. What did you do? She asked. Sleeping powder. He answered as she fell. Clever. Anko stated. That's our brother for you. Karina said. Break. Atsu walked into the nurse's room where Suki was and leaned against the door you lost. She said. I know, he is better than you give him credit for. Suki said. You didn't fight to your potential. Atsu said. I fought hard and he used sleeping powder on me. Suki retorted. You could have easily used Hyration and got the advantage. Atsu said. And what would that have proved? I want to prove to myself that I can win without using it. Besides, Dad said it's not something to use in a one-on-one -on -one fight because of the chakra it consumes. Suki said. Next time you better win, Atsui said and walked out. Suki just blinked at where she stood in confusion. Break. Ryu and Tamari stood in the stadium facing each other as the crowd watched. Ryu waited for her to make a move, as she looked him over and formed a plan in her head. Tamari jumped into the air, Futan. Great breakthrough she called out waving her fan at Ryu. Ryu flashed through some hand signs, Katan, great fireball countered as he powered through Tamari's picking up power from the wind. Shit, Tamari said as she summoned as much chakra as she could, Fyutan, great cutting whirlwind she called out. They were powerful enough to cut through the fire Ryu sent towards her. She landed on the ground breathing hard, you're a user? She asked. Yup, I'm your weakness so your jutsus won't work against me, Ryu said. Damn it, Tamari mumbled as she started to form a plan. Don't think I'm going to give you a chance to work up another plan, Ryu said as he charged with his sword. Tamari used her fan to block the strikes from Ryu's sword as they came. She knew from what her sensei said that he was powerful, but not this powerful, if he kept this up she wouldn't be able to fight back. As he came in for another strike she jumped back. As he came towards her she continued to jump back and dodge his strikes. As she looked around for another plan she noticed that Ryu was looking frustrated by her tactic and a smirk formed on her face. You're a straightforward fighter am I correct? She asked. What does that have to do with anything? He asked as he swung at her again. Everything, Tamari jumped and bounced off the wall and landed on the other side of him. If I'm correct you get frustrated if your opponent chooses to fight you from a distance rather than face your superior strength, which if I'm correct is your biggest advantage. She finished. Stop talking and fight, Ryu growled out. I am fighting, unlike you my best skill is the ability to come up with plans during combat and use my opponent's weakness against them. She ducked under his strike and rolled away which is exactly what I'm doing. She finished as she swung her fan at his now open back. Break. Kurina watched the fight impressively, not many people can get him this frustrated, she said. Looks like we are going to be one and one in these exams so far, Anko said. Don't count him out just yet, Karina said. I'm not, but he is letting her get to him. She is forcing doubt into him. She has won already, Anko said. Break. Tamari followed her attack with another quick one and flashed through some hand signs, Futan. Great cutting whirlwind she said sending them into his back. Your element is useless if you can't use it, she said. Ryu struggled to his feet. I admit you're a worthy opponent, but I'm not done yet, he said. Well let's finish this. 
Tamari said as she slid back into her defense. Instead of attacking like he normally would, Ryu sat back and threw through his options. If I continue to try and make this a taijutsu match I will lose, so I have to change my tactic. He said. So you're admitting that you can't beat me without using ninjutsu? Tamari asked. Katan, great dragon fire technique called out. The shot came out with more chakra in it than Tamari thought was necessary. At the last minute Tamari vanished leaving her fan behind since she was faster without it. Fiatan, sword of wind, Fiatan, wind cutter she said from behind Ryu. Ryu turned in surprise as Tamari unleashed her attack with the wind sword slicing him 50 times across his back. He flew away from her as she finished and fell on the ground unmoving. Tamari dropped to one knee as she watched Ryu to see if he got up or not, she just hoped she didn't kill him. Break. Karina looked on in utter amazement, she won? She asked. Told you, she won the minute he decided to change his tactic against her. Anko said. Break. Po and Ki appeared next to their brother, and each grabbed his arm and lifted him up, your good lie told Tamari. Yeah not too many people can beat him that easily Po said. Hey easy, that was the hardest fight of my life, tell him thanks for challenging me in ways I was never challenged before. Tamari huffed out. We will. Po said as they walked past her with Ryu. Break. Tsunade met them in one of the medic rooms, lay him face down on the bed she told them. Will he be okay? Po asked. Yes, the wounds are not life-threatening, but the loss of blood is so if you will leave me I'll get to work Tsunade said. Right, it's my turn to fight anyway Po said and ran out. Break. Po ran into the stadium with his spear in hand, sorry he said as he got into position. Don't worry, I'm in no rush to beat you. Kankura said. Don't underestimate me. Po said. Kankura smirked and pulled out his puppets, preparing to lose just like your brother did. He said. Po blinked dolls, he asked you to plan on fighting with dolls, how is that even possible that you are not not embarrassed to be carrying around dolls? He finished more calmly after getting over his shock. They are not dolls, they are puppets. Kankuri yelled back. And you're wearing makeup, are you a crossdresser or something? Po asked. It's war paint. Kankuri yelled as he sent his puppet to attack Po. Po used his spear to keep them back. Too bad for you. I'm a long distance fighter if it was Ki or Ri you were facing. I'll give you a chance but it's not he said. Kankura just growled as he sent his puppets back at him. Po jumped at them and swung his spear across the midsection of the puppets breaking them in half. Kankura smirked as gas started to come out of them. You may have broken my puppets, but with this poisonous gas you're done for. He said. Shit, Po said as he started to spin his spear creating a giant tornado from it. Futan, attacking tornado spear said and extended his spear towards Kankura who looked shocked as he was stabbed in the stomach by the spear. You was Takaki, now I do hope you have an anti-poison. He said. Kankuro dropped to one knee coughing up blood, you bastard. He said as he collapsed. Po put his spear in the ground and rested against it, and coughed up some blood, damn the poison still got me. He said. Ki came to the stadium and went to his brother, can you make it back? He asked. Yes, just a little poison, you have more important things to worry about. Po said as Kiri Nin walked into the stadium. So far Whirlpool is 2 to 1 in these exams, congratulations the Nin said nicely. Thanks, Kiri is 1 to 0 so far. Ki said smiling. Yes we are, now let's begin the Nin said. I'm Ki by the way he said. Chujuro replied and attacked with his swords. Ki flipped back and took out his katana. He attacked with his weapon blocking one of Chujuro's swords with his sheath while he tried to stab him with his katana. The two circled each other while doing a complex dance of strikes with their weapons. Ki jumped back just as Chijuro lunged forward and the result was that Chijuro's sword was stuck in Ki's leg. Ki screamed out in pain as Chijuro went in for the finishing blow. At the last minute Ki brought his katana up to block the other sword and grabbed Chijuro's arm, right on, lighting Kuren the said sending his element through the Kirinin. Chuju fell back unconscious while Ki forced the sword out of his leg and dropped it next to Kirinin. He appeared next to him, you fought well, he is the best swordsman his age in Kiri and for you to beat him says a lot about you, continue to build your craft because he will look at you as his rival because of your victory. She said and picked him up with his two swords and walked away. Looks like you picked up a rival from another village. 
Karinai said as she caught him before he fell. He smiled, I'm just so awesome. He said, making Karinai laugh. Break. Sakura and Tenten stood facing each other as they got ready for their match. Finally my turn, Tenten said. Prepare to lose. Sakura said. Tenten smirked and immediately jumped into the air, secret art. Raising a drag as she called out, and two scrolls appeared next to her, and she immediately started to throw the weapons in them down at Sakura, not giving her a chance to dodge. Once she finished Sakura was pinned to the ground with multiple weapons holding her in place. Looks like I won Tenten said. Break. The last Kirinin was walking out to the stadium until he was stopped. Kimimaro, be careful, something is off about his chakra, Haku said. I know Kimimaro said and continued to walk out. Kimimaro stood across Gara as some sand dust blew between the two. As it passed them it whipped back at Kimimaro as he jumped back then into the air just in time to avoid being swallowed by the hole that just opened in the ground. Kimimaro worked his way closer to Gara as he dodged the sand and sent a punch at his face that was blocked by his sand shield. A sand spike came out the shield, almost stabbing Kimimaro in the face as he barely ducked under it. Kimimaro jumped and pulled out a bone katana and came down on Gara, slicing him in half. Gara fell into the sand as he once again attacked Kimimaro while his back was turned. Kimimaro quickly sliced the sand in half. He then ran at Gara as Gara created a sand spear and ran at him. The two exchanged hits until Kimimaro kicked Gara into the air. Sand shower Gara said using his airborne state as an advantage. A sand cloud started to form above Kimimaro and sand fell out of it towards Kimimaro. Once it stopped Kimimaro was covered in sand but otherwise unharmed, Desert Coffin Gara said, forming a coffin of sand around Kimimaro, Desert Funeral finished as the sand pulled Kimimaro underground and hardened. Gara turned and started to walk back towards the waiting area until he felt something in the sand. He turned wide-eyed as the ground started to crack, Desert Floating Sanda said as he was quickly lifted off the ground just as the entire stadium floor was filled with 10 feet bone spears. Kimimaro came out with what looked like multiple spears wrapped around his right arm and stabbed Gara in the chest with it. Gara was wide-eyed as he fell to his knees as blood poured out the hole in his chest. Kimimaro caught him before he fell off the sand onto the spears. As Kimimaro descended the spears descended back into the ground. He walked towards the door as a team of medics came rushing out with a gurney for Gara. Break. Shizen ran into the room that Gara was in, where Tsunade, one of the medics, asked. Still removing the poison from Kankuru and Po, I'm in charge of this one, how bad is he? Shizen asked. The attack missed his heart, but the hole in his chest won't stop bleeding, a medic said. Okay. I'm going to perform the healing resuscitation regeneration Shizen said as she started to pull some strings of hair off Gara. Break. Kimimaro walked past Tamari and stopped. I didn't kill him, he said hesitantly and started to walk again. How did you survive? Tamari asked. Kimimaro stopped again. I was able to put up my own version of a defense shield. It uses my bones that are impossible to break. He said. Oh was all Tamari said. Break. Kiki stood in the stadium waiting for Sasuke to arrive. Where the hell is the Uchiha? She asked. I have no clue, Gemma said as he looked up at the Hokage. We will give him four minutes to arrive, he said. Why four minutes and not two? Kiki asked. That's what I was told to give him, Gemma said. Break. Where is your precious Jenin? Kushin asked. Like you're one to talk, your Jenin was late for his match. Minato responded. His match was the second one. The Uchiha is over two hours late. This is unacceptable. Kushina said. What afraid that Kiki will lose? Minato asked. If that's how you feel, why not move their match until after the next one to give him more time to prepare for being beaten? Kushina asked. Fine. Minato said. Break. The Kagas have agreed to move this match until the last one. Can Hinata of Whirlpool and Niji of Kanoha come down? Gemma said. The two stood across from each other not moving. What's wrong? Why haven't you moved? Hinata asked with a smirk. I'm waiting for you to move. Niji replied. Oh, so all that talk you did before the exams about how you are going to beat me was just talk? Hinata taunted. Niji stood there calmly. You can't taunt me into attacking, he said. Hinata shrugged fine, she said and sped towards him. Niji flipped back as she brought her fist down where he was, 
Chakra arm Hanada said as Red Chakra extended from her arm and grabbed Niji by the leg and pulled him closer to her where she punched him with her other hand. Sorry, getting away from me isn't that easy, she said. Everyone in the stands looked in shock as they saw the Red Chakra. Hanada jumped after Niji as he was sent flying back. You know if you don't fight back I'm going to kill you she said as she aimed a punch towards his face that sent him crashing into the ground. Niji slowly stood up and wiped the blood off his face and got in his stance. Hinata looked at him with a curious look on her face. She then vanished and aimed a kick at his head which he ducked and pressed a few chakra points on her open leg. Hinata jumped back with a frown on her face as she forced it back open with Kyuubi's chakra. She huffed in annoyance as she threw a few at him. Niji waited until they got close, and Kaiten called out. He stopped and looked at Hinata. You surprised me with that extra chakra. But the surprise is gone. Your chance of winning is gone. He said. Hinata looked at him lazily. I want to try a new technique I've been learning from you. I'm sure you saw it before but my brother and sister didn't, she said and slid into the stance her mother taught her. Niji raised an eyebrow. You're going to try and match my not serious are you? He asked. Oh I'm not going to match you. I'm going to kick your Hyuga ass all over this stadium, Hinata said with a cocky grin. Niji narrowed his eyes on her and attacked. Hinata smiled her cocky kitsune grin as she ducked his attack and launched her own attack, which he blocked or ducked under. The two blocked and countered each other until they jumped back. What happened to you kicking my ass across this stadium? Niji asked. Oh, I'm just getting started, Hinata said as she attacked him again with even greater speed. Niji blocked and ducked most of her attacks until he was kicked in the face, sending him across the stadium. She sped until she was behind him and aimed a well-placed foot in his ass sending him back across the stadium. She gave her cocky kitsune grin again. Told you I would kick your ass across the stadium she said with humor in her voice. Niji just stared at her. You are an idiot he said. Guess what, I know a lot of ninjutsu. Hinata also said as she kicked him in the back. Never take your eyes off your opponent. It will create an opening for a clone to be made, she said. Niji stood up and looked at the two. I see you can't fight one on one, he said. Hinata blanked at him. You do realize that you only hit me like three times this entire match, she asked. You do realize you're in my range, Niji asked with a smirk. Hak Rokujuyanshiv called out and attacked the one on the left since the one on the right was a clone. Hinata flew back after her chakra points were closed and Niji looked down on her. You're no match for a true Hyuga. You're just a sad copy of one he then walked away. Everyone watched as Niji walked away confident that he won and thought he did until Hinata slowly started to get up. Don't turn your back on me she said on her hands and knees looking at the ground breathing hard. Niji stopped and glanced back. You're not worth my time. He said and started walking away again. I said don't turn your back on me, Hinata repeated. Just lie down and die Niji said still not looking at her. Hinata exploded with chakra. Don't turn your back on me damn it, I'm not through with you she yelled as Kyuubi's chakra flowed through her, Swayton. Water whipped she said and a whip of water appeared in her left hand which she used to wrap around Niji's neck and yanked him back to her, right on. Hiroshinch finished and her lighting element coursed through her body until it formed a glove of lighting on her right hand, she then forced it into Niji's body. Niji screamed out in pain as he hit him with Hinata having no reason to stop. Hinata Eri yelled after a minute of this. The girl looked up at her mother with red eyes and black slits before she dropped him. I'm not with you, she said and started to walk away. Her and elements are still flowing freely from her hands. As Hinata approached the door she was stopped. You bitch get back here, she heard. Glancing over her shoulder she saw Niji trying to get to his feet. Stay down, or I will kill you, she said in a demonic voice. Don't talk down to me you Hyuga reject. Your mother is a Hyuga reject your entire family is a bunch of rejects he said as he coughed up blood barely able to get to his knees. Hinata vanished and appeared in front of him. A chakra tail shot out and grabbed him around the neck holding him in the air. She pulled her right hand back and shot it at Niji, stopping just before she tore through his stomach. If I'm a reject then live with the knowledge of being beaten and humiliated by a reject she said then dropped him. You're not worth me even acknowledging what she said as she walked away. Everyone looked at the display with silence. None of them would have let him survive after what he said and the fact that Hinata did gave her respect from them, except those from Kanoha. They were pissed that she beat him with what looked like little effort. Even before she used QB she was in control of the fight. Before Hinata reached the door, leaves started to fall. She looked back and saw two figures appear in the stadium. Sorry are we late? 
the older one asked. What happened? The younger one asked. It happened, Hanada said as she glared at him. Kiki dropped next to Hanada. This one is mine. Go relax. I know it takes a lot of chakra to open your chakra points back up, even for you, she said. Kick his ass, Hanada said. Oh, I plan to, Kiki said as she walked towards him. Is someone going to move the trash out the way, she asked, pointing to Niji. Sasuke glared at Kiki with his Sharingan as he got into his stance. Kiki matched his glare with her own glare. She had shoulder green hair. She had piercing bright red eyes. She was wearing a white sleeveless shirt that connected behind her neck. The back of the shirt was open. She had sleeves up to her stopped six inches from her shoulder. On the right sleeve at the top was her whirlpool hitait. She wore a white skirt that stopped at her knees. She had black shoes with white shin bracers over them. She also wore a black trench coat that hung tied around her waist. Under her clothes was black fishnet to contrast against her white. Her skin was nicely tanned light brown. She moved her hair out of her eyes you said I was useless after the first test ended. Let me show you how useless I really and she then vanished and kicked him across the stadium. You should know, I'm the fastest gen in here. Even with your Sharingan you have no chance of keeping up with me she said as she walked towards him. All things can be conquered by the Sharingan Sasuke said. Kiki pulled out a really. And if I slowly pry out your Sharingan, then what she asked as she flicked her wrist at him letting the fly. Sasuke barely rolled out the way, Katan, great fireball said. Kiki rolled her eyes and sidestepped the, honestly what part of you can't touch me did you not get? That includes your jutsu she asked. Impossible Sasuke said. Nothing is impossible for a whirlpool kunoichi she said, dotan, earth spike she said. Sasuke jumped out of the way, you're a user he asked. Swayton. Vortex she said, in a sense I am she said then vanished after he dodged the again. She kicked him in the head and sent him flying, honestly, is this all the Sharingan has to offer? If you ask me it's not worth the trouble of finding a competent Uchiha. I mean really you're making all Uchihas look bad just like the Hyuga made the Byakugan look bad she said. Sasuke glared at her, you will pay for that comment he said. You bore me she said and vanished, train more than maybe you can challenge me she said from behind me and punched him in the back of the neck knocking him out. She sighed as she looked at him fall, are everyone in this village all talk, so far I only saw three shinobi worth fighting and two of them were beaten, even if barely she asked out loud. Don't get so cocky, he was only a glimpse of what a true Uchiha could do and Uchiha said as he glared at her with his Sharingan. Oh, so you can give me more of a challenge Kiki asked with a smirk. After all I'm sure the Uchiha prodigy Itachi could handle the lowly Sakuto she taunted. The clan of speed, so some of you did survive, Itachi said. Careless Uchiha says always, never checking their work Kiki said, shrugging her shoulders dismissing him. Why don't you leave my student alone before I kill you Anko said as she appeared next to Kiki. Itachi looked at her, you should teach her to watch her tongue he said. Why would I teach something as stupid as watching her tongue? She then smirked. Only an Uchiha would want to do something like that, she added. Do you want to make me mad, Itachi asked. Enko tilted her head to the side. Are you afraid of getting embarrassed by a Kunoichi, she retorted. Before Itachi could say something, part of the stadium was blown up and multiple Uchihos ran into the stadium. Itachi got Sasuke out of here then returned. We are taking over, the leader said. Yes, Father Itachi said. Silly power hungry Uchihos, Enko said before he was shot out of earshot break. Looks like you can't keep your Uchihas under control Kushina said as she jumped out the Kage box. Let's go she said to the Whirlpool Shinobis. Itachi arrived back at the stadium and found Minato as he knocked an Uchiha unconscious. What's the meaning of this Itachi? The blonde Hokage asked. Remember the report of a group of Uchihas planning something? This was their plan, to take control of the village. Itachi told the Hokage. Where do your loyalties lie? Minato asked. I'm here talking to you now so that should be enough to tell you what side I'm on. The Sharingan wielder told him. When a shinobi appeared, Minato-sensei the Uchiha started to attack the civilians and visitors. He said. Kakashi, Itachi, let's end this now. Minato said as he pulled out his special kunai. Itachi activated his Sharingan while Kakashi moved his aid up showing his Sharingan. Break. Figaku watched in horror as the three systematically killed or knocked the Uchihas he sent to attack the civilians and visitors unconscious. He stood with his most trustworthy Uchihas, Shur Sui, Yashiro, Tekka, and Inabi, 
all members of the Uchiha police force. With the rest of the village taking out the rest of his small army, Fugaku devised a plan to take out the Hokage and led the four towards the middle of the stadium where the Hokage had just appeared. Break. Kushina stopped noticing that Naruto wasn't with them. She quickly changed her direction and frantically looked for her son before finding him sitting on top of the stadium watching the fighting. Rito-chan, what are you doing? She asked. Naruto pointed. I want to see what makes him so special. He told her to point to Minato as he started to fight with Fugaku. The others landed by them, so I guess we are not leaving yet? Anko asked. Not yet, let's watch this layout. Kushina said no helping them, this is their problem not ours. She quickly added. A little while later. Minato looked at the lifeless body of Fugaku. He then looked around and found that Itachi had also killed Shursue and Kakashi had killed these three opponents. He nodded to them and the two vanished, finishing off most of the rogue Uchiha's. Minato himself looked over the area for his daughter. Everyone stopped moving. They heard. Everyone stopped and looked up to see who was talking. On top of the stadium was an old man with bandages all over his body, and he was holding a small blonde girl in one hand and a tanto in the other pressed against her neck. Danzo, release my daughter now, Minato demanded. You're in no position to make demands, you can't suggest I do something and I will go with it like Hiruzen did sealing Kyubi away. Danzo said, his voice full of confidence. What do you want? Minato asked. It's quite simple, hand control of the village over to the Uchi house. Danzo demanded. Break. Naruto looked at what was happening before glancing at everyone else to see that they were also focused on what was happening. He quickly created a clone and slipped away while it stayed back in his spot. Quickly he made his way across the stadium without being seen. When he was within he made the mistake of slipping on some rocks. Danzo looked over in surprise, Naruto. Kushina yelled as she saw him at the same time. While that was happening Suki elbowed Danzo as Naruto ran full speed and kicked him in the face jerking his head back and forcing him to release her. As soon as his head jerked back Minato was on him with his kunai at his neck, die. He said as cold blue eyes stared deadly into the old man's eye. Kushina walked up to Naruto fully prepared to give him a talk about getting into other people's business. Before she could say anything, Naruto beat her to it. Sorry I know you said just watch, but she is my sister and I have to protect her even if her father is a selfish bastard. He said, Kushina took a deep breath to calm her nerves. I completely understand why you did and would be even angrier at you if you didn't try and help her. But next time tell me before you pull a stun like that. She told her son pulling him into a hug. Minato looked at Danzo as his lifeless body fell off the stadium. He then pulled Suki into a hug before standing up and finally looking at the blonde kid who had the honor of being his firstborn. He was currently hugging his mother. Clearing his throat he got their attention. Sorry to interrupt but I believe a few words are in order. He said slowly as if debating what exactly to say. Kushina stood up, better make it quick before your wife gets up here. She said holding back her growing need to punch him in the face. Her thinking was that maybe, just maybe he would be willing to be the father that Naruto needed, even if she didn't want him to be. Minato saw a younger version of himself while looking at Naruto except he had red hair. The determination in his eyes was the same determination he had at that age. You need to teach him to stay in his place. Was all he said before turning and walking away, let's go Suki. He said. Kushina looked at his retreating form in shock, although not shocked that he didn't want anything to do with Naruto, but the fact that he would say something like that in his own son's face. She now was really struggling not to attack him, well the least you can do is thank him for saving your daughter's life. She said. She knew it was wishful thinking that he would man up. Minato stopped and glanced back. If he would have then I would thank him, but since the one who got Danzo off my daughter was my daughter I don't need to thank him. He said and continued to walk away. Suki looked at her father then her brother then back at her father before running to Naruto. Thank you brother. She whispered as she hugged him. Let's go son, I can't be in this village any longer or I'm going to kill someone. Kushina said. As the two walked towards the rest of the group Naruto thought of something. Do you regret it? He asked. Kushina, confused by the question, looked at him. Regret what? She asked. Being with him. He told her. Kushina stopped and bent down to his level. Listen to me carefully Naruto, 
What happened in my past is just that, the past. I was engaged to him because it would help our village rebuild quicker and strengthen our user relationship with Kanoha. So no I don't regret that. The time I spent here in Kanoha was some of the best times of my younger life. I met my best friends here and was trained by Tsunade Sensei. Became a sensei for Anko, Karinai, and Itachi three prodigies in their respective families. And was introduced to the best possible food ever to be made, ramen. So no I don't regret none of that. But most importantly if it wasn't for Yuza sending me here then I would have never met Minato, and you would never have been born. I would go through all that again just so I can see your face as I held you for the first time. Naruto having you here with me every day is the greatest joy in the world and I wouldn't give it up for anything, even if your father is the biggest ass ever. She finished while pulling him into a hug. Kushina looked up from her position and saw her ninjas looking at them. Did you hear all that? She asked. They smiled at her. Being a mother is the best feeling in the world and nothing can change that. Eri said. I'm hungry. The young Hyuga told them all. Well let's go visit Ichiraku Ramen one last time before we leave, it's on me. Kushina said, in hindsight she realized that it is a very bad idea to offer to pay for a group of seven ninja food, especially when one of those ninjas has a demon in her and eats like no tomorrow and two more eat like they had bottomless pits for stomachs. Eri knew what Kushina was getting into by offering to pay, but decided not to say anything to teach her a lesson, never buy food for Hinata, Naruto, and Kushina at the same time. Break. After everyone was full and Kushina purse was noticeably lighter they were at the main gate. Does everyone have everything? Kushina asked. We are all ready. Karina said. Did you really leave without saying anything? They heard. Standing just outside of the gate was a Kunoichi. She was wearing a standard Uchiha ninja outfit with a vest over it. Her long black hair was pulled back behind her shoulders where it fell to her waist. She smiled brightly at the group, Kushi-chan Eri-chan. How have I missed you? She said, pulling them into a hug. Mikoto-chan slash Miko-chan. The two said while returning the hug. After the three finished hugging, the Uchiha looked over at the rest of the group, Anko-chan, Kurinai-chan. I'm glad you both have decided to visit she said with a bit of humor. Well, I can't let my Jenin team go to a village without being there, Anko said. Jenin? Mikoto looked at the children. Well, hello, I'm Mikoto Uchiha, mother of Sasuke and Itachi Uchiha, and the teammate of Kushina and Eri. She introduced herself to her. After the Jenin was introduced, Kushina turned to her old teammate. You know that idiot of yours just tried to take over the village, she said. Mikoto sighed and shook her head. Again? She asked. Again? Eri asked in confusion. I'm glad Itachi has my talent and smarts because that husband of mine is going to get himself killed if he isn't dead already. Every few months for a year he tries to overthrow Minato and take the position of Hokage for himself. Usually I am able to stop him. But I feared with my last mission he would take advantage of my absence and try a full-scale coup, so I ordered Itachi to keep a close eye on him and report everything to the Hokage. She explained. So it wouldn't be a surprise that your idiot is now dead? Kushina asked. No, not really, although I will say that I'm going to miss him. Mikoto told them. Well we need to get going and I'm sure you need to make arrangements for a burial. Kushina said. Yes I do. We need to get together soon and catch up. Mikoto told them. We will even if I have to drag our childish teammates someplace close by. Eri told her. Oh Eri-chan you should know there is a group out attacking. So far they managed to capture and defeat the six-tailed. Mikoto warned. Thanks for telling me this. Eri said. One month later. Walking up to the main entrance of Yuzu was a tall man with long white spiky hair with two bangs reaching his shoulder framing his face. He also has red lines that run down from his eyes and is wearing a horned forehead protector with the kanji for oil. He is wearing a green short shirt kimono and matching pants, under which he wears mesh armor that shows out of the sleeves and legs of his outfit. His outfit is complete with hand guards, a simple black belt, traditional Japanese wooden sandals, a red cloak with two simple yellow circles, and a toad contract summoning scroll on his back. Behind him were two kunoichis, both wearing a kanoha hitaite. Take your hat off, he instructed. Why? The blonde asked. Because Kanoha ninjas are always not allowed and without prior arrangements to be escorted by an ANBU or the Yuzukage. 
Jiraiya told them as they took their aid off. Can I help you Jiraiya-sama? The guard asked in respect. Yes, my apprentice and her friend are here to visit. Jiraiya said. Well hurry in, have a good visit. The guard said opening the gate. Can you tell me where my godson is? Jiraiya asked as he walked through the open gate. Knowing him, probably off pranking some poor person. The guard said while laughing. Jiraiya waved as the three walked through the gate. Suki and Tenten had a look around and met me at the Yuzukids building in an hour. He said and walked off. An hour later. Jiraiya was in the Yuzukids building talking with Kushina when there was a knock on the door. Come in. Kushina said. The door opened to show Tenten and Suki both with bags in their hands. You bought that much stuff in the hour you were here? Jiraiya asked. Suki shrugged. Most of it is food that's specific to Yuzu. She said. Welcome to Yuzu Suki and Tenten. Kushina said. Thank you. It's a beautiful place. Suki said. Well now we are a little behind. So how long until Naruto and Hinata arrive so we can get going? Jiraiya asked. Aero Senin. They heard as the door flew open and two blurs tackled the sage. Brats didn't I tell you not to call me that? Jiraiya asked as he patted them on the head. Is Haim Sanin coming? Hinata asked. Why don't you ask me that and not him? Someone asked from the door. Looking at the newcomer, Suki and Tenten both stared wide-eyed at her. Standing in front of them was Tsunade. They took in the appearance of their idol for the first time in their young lives. She has long blonde hair tied into two loose ponytails using purple bands, except for her bangs which are parted in the middle and fall down the sides of her face. She was wearing a grass-green robe with the kanji for gamble written in black on the back, inside a red circle. Underneath she had on a gray, kimono-style blouse with no sleeves, held closed by a broad, dark bluish-gray obi that matches her pants. Her blouse was closed quite low, revealing her sizable cleavage. She was wearing open-toed sandals with high heels and polish on both her fingernails and toenails. Tsunade looked at the two, well, are you going to just stare at me or say something? She mused. Tsunade-sama? Tenten asked. Just call me Tsunade, she said, waving off the sama part. Haim Sanin you coming? Hinata asked. Tsunade looked at Hinata then put a finger on her chin. I don't know, I have a lot of other things I can do besides babysit a bunch of brats. She said playfully. Please, the four genins said at the same time. Tsunade smiled at them. Of course I'll come, if only to make sure someone doesn't try and make this entire trip into a giant money-making book. She said, shooting Jiraiya a look as he smiled innocently. How long will this trip last? Kushin asked. Two or three years, Jiraiya told her. With Kiki. The last member of Anko's genin team stood in her yard with her parents and uncle. The female had on clothes similar to those that Kiki herself wore except where hers was white, her mother's was purple. The two males were wearing clothes similar to Naruto's except they were wearing a black cloak instead of a jacket. The three looked at the young genin, Kiki for the next two years or so, until your team returns you will train and train hard. One of the males said. The female rolled her eyes, we really. Stop with all this you're going to train and train hard crap or I will ban you from coming around my daughter for three years. She said. Sophia is the last member of our once amazing clan. We need to make sure she is the strongest. The man now named Ryu said. We know that Ryu, but Sophia has a point. What's the point if all she does is train and lose herself in her training? She will become a shell of herself. The last man said. You're just saying that because she is your daughter. All fathers are too soft on their daughter's kuro. Ryu told him. Kiki sighed, can you please stop this? Every time it's time for training you argue about how to train me and I usually end up having to train myself. She said desperately trying to stop the upcoming argument between the three. Sophia sighed, she is right. We need to focus on her and not how we think the best way to train her is. She said. How do you suggest we train her then? Ryu asked in annoyance. Let's have Kiki decide. Kuro suggested. The three looked at her waiting. Well, Uncle Ryu, you are great at ninjutsu, so you can teach me that. Dad, you're great at so you can teach me that. Mom, you can teach me taijutsu. And I think I can find an ANBU to teach me to use the Tanto Rudo got me. She told them. Sounds good to me. Sophia said. 
Ryu groaned with annoyance of having to take instructions from a 12-year-old. Fine, your training starts at noon tomorrow. He said in a loud voice before walking off. Sophia looked at her older brother. Ever since he was named Whirlpool's Densetsu no Sanin, by the rakage his attitude has become very arrogant. She said worried about her brother. After all it was well known what happened once the Sanins in Kanoha was named. I'll talk to him and make sure everything is okay. Kuro said as he watched his best friend walk away before following him. Mom, is your uncle going to betray us like Team Sanin did his friends? Kiki asked. She really liked her uncle and hoped he wouldn't. No, I won't let him become Rouge. Sophia declared. With Ryu and Kuro. Kuro caught up with his best friend, Ryu. Is something wrong? He asked. No, why? Ryu answered. Well, you have been acting differently ever since we became Sanins. Kuro told him. Different? Ryu asked. Well, I noticed that you act more arrogant than before. Sophia also noticed this. I want to make sure nothing is wrong with you. Ryu said. Ryu sighed. You two just don't realize the situation we are in. He told his friend. Then explain it to me. Kuro told him. Sophia. And myself are the last adults in our clan and although I love my niece and have all the faith in her as you do, there is just too much pressure on her. The Uchiha clan has all but wiped us out, and it's only a matter of time before they try and finish us off. If something happens to Kiki I don't know what will happen, she is the last memory of our clan. It's up to me and Sophia to teach her everything about our clan while letting her look for a potential spouse. Ryu told him. Kuro took everything in. Just because you're the last of your clan doesn't mean you can't put all your faith into Kiki. She loves a challenge and will rise up to meet and exceed our expectations. He told Ryu. I know, but still this is a lot of pressure for a 12-year-old. Ryu said. Kuro suppressed the urge to smack the older man upside his head. No it's not, she has mastered everything we threw at her so far. If that's not enough proof that she is ready for this look at her team, Naruto is forced to learn everything about the Ozumaki clan and has mastered what Kushinasama has taught him. Hinata, while not the last member of her clan, has the added pressure of being a while mastering the. They all have unneeded pressure on them and they are meeting expectations. It would do Kiki a disservice if we took all those expectations away from her. I guess you're right, Ryu said. I know I'm right. Besides Kiki has something that her team doesn't, Kuro said. Ryu looked at him. What's that? He asked. An uncle who can still have kids. Ryu said before walking away. Kiki loves you too much to let you fall into the darkness worrying about her and will do anything to make you proud of her. He added before he ran back to his house. Ryu stood there thinking about what was just said. Break. Kiki ran across the village to the gate and wasn't surprised to see Naruto and Hinata wrestling around. What surprised me was that the two Kunoichis from Kanoha were. Ignoring them for the time being she ran to her best friends. Ruto didn't your mother teach you not to hit girls? She teased. Everyone there started laughing. Naruto glared at her while holding a laughing Hinata in the air. You want a piece of me to Kiki? He asked as a clone appeared and tackled the laughing girl. Both Tsunade and Jiraiya smiled at the carefree attitude of the young teen. Watching them you would think that they are civilian 12 year olds. Jiraiya said to his longtime teammate. Let's hope they keep this carefree attitude and pass it on to those two. Tsunade said, pointing to the stiff-looking genins from Kanoha. It's just an act. They are at heart still a representative of Kanoha and need to show it. But when they are alone they act just like any other 12-year-old child. Jiraiya said. Tsunade raised an eyebrow at him. And you just happen to know this? She asked. Jiraiya shrugged. I need to know the habits of the people I'm training. He said. Tsunade nodded satisfied with that answer. Okay enough playing you three, Ruto and Nada it's time to leave. The three got off the ground, I'm going to beat you both into the ground next time we have team sparing. Naruto declared. Hinata laughed right like you beat me last time we spared. She asked. That wasn't fair Kiki helped you. Naruto protested. It was a free for all, and I won so you two better train hard because next time I'm going to beat you even worse. Kiki told them. The three then stuck their fists together, writing to me. Kiki said. You write to us too. Hinata said. Okay let's get this show on the road. Naruto said as he marched out of the village, um, where are we going? He stopped and asked. 
looking back at his two godparents with a big smile. Jiraiya shook his head at the boy. This is going to be an unforgettable trip. Yes, one that will drive us both crazy, but I wouldn't miss this for the world. Tsunade said as the group started to leave Yuzu. The end. Thanks for watching my video, and make sure to check out the author of this fanfic. Link is in the description. See you next time, till then sayonara.